Audio test, audio test, testing audio. seeing no more. I mean, we're getting so much more game consumption through Facebook anyways. It's like, doing the digital stream just isn't bad at all because, uh, you know, you end up, you know, I think getting, you know, just maybe a few less people watching or consuming the game by the same token. You're not interrupting all your stuff. And you're all the like, most Mondays are good. It's just like, some of the rest of the week gets issues. Yeah, you know, the same thing is they all going to come down to Mother Nature. And yeah, all that stuff too, yeah. Them. Sure, Gary didn't text me. See how far out he is.
It's time for another Sea Harp Rada Group High School Sports Night. Coverage of Laurel Highlands Baseball here on the WMBS Facebook page, the Laurel Highlands School District Facebook page, and on the Triple Live High School Sports Network. Our game coverage today being brought to you by the Sea Harp Rada Group. Movement Physiotherapy, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law. Russ Blayhill, your local Allstate Insurance Agent. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. The Catholic War Veterans, Post 1669 in Hopwood. Potter's Bar and Grill. Uniontown Detailing. Ford of Uniontown. Movement Physiotherapy, the WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, Peachins Pharmacy, m &R Transit, the Sprouse Insurance Group and Insurance Agent David Hughes, Novacare Rehabilitation, Ted Sova and Son Body and Fender Repair, John Marietta for Fayette County Commissioner, South Union Township Supervisor Rick Vernon, Melinda Delarose for Judge, Mama Ruka's Pizza Shop, the Centers for Rehab Services and Physical Therapist Jim Burns, State Farm Agent Lauren Yeoman, the Ratcliffe Law Firm, Shop and Save, Uniontown Detailing, Jimmy Johns and Attorneys Bobby Gordon, Shane Gannon and Tim Witt at Watson Mundorf LLP. Welcome to a beautiful afternoon here at Laurel Highlands High School Landman Field as the Laurel Highlands Mustangs have their home opening game of this season as they take on the Greater Latrobe Wildcats. Brian Morozak along with you. Gary Frankhauser is going to join me for all of the exciting play-by-play. -play. Matt Sapienza, you might know from the WMBS Morning Show, is actually behind the camera today on our Trib Live High School Sports Network and Facebook Live video feed. And Frank Kula helping us out with our scoreboard today as well. Our pregame show is always being brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group and Insurance Agent. David Hughes. They'll get you ready for the game. They're located at 217 West Main Street in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-9812 for the Sprouse Insurance Group. Mustangs off to a pretty tough start. Laurel Highland sitting at 0-4 overall, 0-1 in conference play. Brad Yeoman in his second year as the Mustangs head coach. Matt Bassiano, the head coach of the Greater Latrobe Wildcats, who sit at 3-2 overall, 1-0 in conference play. Greater Latrobe last year, 12-8. Of course, Laurel Highland's 16-8. The Mustangs coming off a start historic season, picking up their first ever PIAA baseball playoff win, downing Erie Cathedral Prep before losing to West Mifflin in a game the Mustangs almost won in the state quarterfinals at Greater Latrobe a season ago, but the Mustangs losing some pretty good seniors off that team, including their ace pitcher Joe Chambers. We mentioned it's been a little rough start to the 2023 campaign that actually started down near Orlando, Florida. The Mustangs playing three games down in Florida on March 29th, or check that March 26th, 27th, and 28th. Two of the games against Grays Lake North from Grays Lake, Illinois. The other against St. Francis of Illinois out of the Wheaton, Illinois area. The Mustangs losing the games against Grays Lake 6-4 to four and 3-2. to two. Lost to St. Francis 4-1 to one and also lost their conference opener yesterday to this very same greater Latrobe team by a score of 13 to 5. We mentioned this Latrobe program pretty solid. They moved down from 5A to 4A in the offseason. They lost to Thomas Jefferson in the first round of the playoffs last year, but they sit at 3 and 2 after that win over Laurel Highlands yesterday. They also had a 14 to 1 win over a pretty decent Connellsville team that doubled up Trinity yesterday, 8 to 4, and also had an 8 to 6 win over Avonworth. Their two losses, just one run losses, 4 to 3 against Upper Arlington of Ohio. They also lost a 4 to 3 decision against one of their rivals in Westmoreland County in Hempfield. So the Wildcats set to go. The Mustangs trying to avoid going to 0-2 in conference play to start the season. It actually happened a year ago when Laurel Highlands lost a doubleheader down at West Mifflin to the Titans, but were able to rebound from those opening two losses. Of course, had a run to the WPIL semifinals, won a PIAA play-in game before knocking off Erie in the first round of the PIAA playoffs. And the Mustangs last year actually won the lone meeting over Greater Latrobe by a score of 10-6, to but the Wildcats win over the Mustangs yesterday snapped a five-game Laurel Highlands winning streak in the series. And the pitching matchup today on the Laurel Highlands side, we expected to see Devin Kravoski, but we understand Devin not at 100% today, so the Mustangs will throw Paxton Patronus on the mound, and Patronus will be countered by Logan Bradish for the Greater Latrobe Wildcats. And we'll set the lineups for both Greater Latrobe and Laurel Highlands when our Sprouse Insurance Group pregame show continues right after this. Again, live exclusive digital coverage today on the WMBS and the Laurel Highlands School District Facebook pages, also on the Trib Live 
High School Sports Network. Bad hair day, bad day at the office, bad day behind the wheel. Hey, stuff happens even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance that stays put until you change your car, driver, or dress, plus seriously good service. Now, that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township, of course, is the Sprouse Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprouseInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock is not guaranteed. Continue insurance coverage. Of course, not available in all states. Of course, our game coverage also brought to you by the Sea Harper Auto Group, the best price every time, all the time, the Sea Harper Auto Group. And, of course, since 1976, Davis & Davis has represented people, not insurance companies. Their lawyers have experience in litigating or settling all personal injury claims, medical claims, malpractice cases, and wrongful death action cases. For more information on how Davis & Davis can help you, you could phone 724-437. 2799. The Greater Latrobe Wildcats to bat here in the top half of the first inning. Leading things off will be their center fielder, Eric Batista, the senior batting 353. Louis Amatucci's catching batting second. Logan Bradish pitching batting third. Tony Masari's playing first base. He's in the cleanup spot. Eli Boring in right field batting fifth. Jacob Kramer in left field batting sixth. Tyler Fazekas is the designated hitter. He's batting seventh. Riley Smith, the third baseman, batting eighth. And Dante Bassiano playing second base and batting ninth for the Greater Latrobe Wildcats. Defensively, for Laurel Highlands, they'll blaze Krisner in left, C.J. Gesk in center, Shane Layton in right, and around the horn will be Tyler Sankovich at third, Frank Kula at short, Parker Hoff at second, Braden O'Brien playing first, Paxton Patronis pitching, and Sevi Vecchioli catching for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. We're back with the national anthem and the First pitch between Laurel Highlands and Greater Latrobe. And you're listening to and watching live exclusive digital coverage of Laurel Highlands baseball here on the WMBS Facebook page, the South Union Township Sports Network Facebook page, the Laurel Highlands School District, and also on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. MNR Transit, locally owned and operated by the Scott family, has been helping students travel safely to school in Fayette County for more than three years. MNR Transit is a proud sponsor of Laurel Highlands High School Baseball and wishes all of our area teams the best of luck. For more information on MNR Transit, you can phone 724-439-3164. That's 724-439-3164. Stop into their office at 253 South Mount Vernon Avenue in Uniontown. Jimmy John's Walnut Hill Plaza Union Town, a proud supporter of local high school sports. A great place to stop for a sandwich and a drink before or after the game. You can stop by at Jimmy John's to fuel up. They're located in Walnut Hill Plaza right by Shop and Save. UPMC Centers Free App Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community. They treat sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, sprains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. You can call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access, and they can contact a doctor for you. That's 724-437-7500 for UPMC's Centers for Rehab Services. Switching is easy. We do it all the time. We switch on the lights. We switch TV channels. Some of us even switch partners while square dancing. Well, that's a stretch. Well, it's not a stretch. It's how you can switch and save with State Farm. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman right here in Uniontown can switch you over. She can start saving today. Lauren and her team are ready to welcome you to the State Farm neighborhood. With Lauren Yeoman, it's easy to switch and save. Just give her a call. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Lauren Yeoman... One of our video stream sponsors today, along with Movement Physiotherapy. We thank all of our sponsors for bringing you Laurel Highlands High School Baseball and all of the local high school sports throughout the course of the season. The Mustangs and the Home Whites today with blue numbers and the LH logo in red on the fronts of the jerseys. The Greater Latrobe Wildcats and their away oranges with black numbers. A little white trim around the numbers and gray pants. Looks like we're going to be set to go. No national anthem here today. It will be Eric Batista to get things started here for the Greater Latrobe Wildcats. Again, facing Paxton Patronis for the Mustangs. The first pitch a little high for ball one. Again, Brian Barozak along with you. Matt Sapienza behind the camera. Gary Frankhauser's going to be joining me at some point this afternoon. And Frank Kula helping us out with our score hub here today as well. 0-1. From Patronus to Batista, and Batista sends it high in the air down the left field line. That one going foul out of the reach of Blaze Krisner made a good run at it there for the Mustangs down the 
left field line. Now leaving the count at one and one to Batista, the Greater Latrobe center fielder senior, batting 353 with seven RBIs so far this season. Patronus now reading again here for Laurel Highlands. Big spot for him, opportunity to put himself into the Mustang pitching rotation with a solid performance today. Comes back with a breaking ball. I think that one was call called a ball there, Frank. It was called a ball, 2-1. That was a little screen there. Of course, the press box here at Laurel Highlands leaves a little bit to be desired from time to time. We try to make our... Best out of the circumstances we're working through. 2-1 pitch on the way. Fastball catches the strike zone right at the knees, even at the count at 2-2 two two from Patronus to Eric Batista. Mostly cloudy skies right now, but warm. It's around 75 degrees when I was making the drive over to Laurel Highlands High School. 2-2 two -two on the way, a little high and outside. Takes us full to 3-2. Batista opening batter for Greater Latrobe here in the top half of the first inning. Mustangs looking for a solid start after falling to Greater Latrobe. 13-5 yesterday. Now the payoff pitch from Patronus to Batista. Now Paxton stepping off here. We'll regroup a bit here for the Mustangs. Now the 3-2 again. And this ball lined foul down the left field line. So we'll go 3-2 once again. One of the highlights for Laurel Highlands yesterday, a two-run home run from Frank Kula. Not occurring in the first inning for the Mustangs. Latrobe plating 13. 3-2 Three, again, and this ball hit on the ground again foul down the third baseline. The opening game of this series was originally scheduled here yesterday between these two schools. It was a 4 o'clock start. We plan to bring it to you here on WMBS, both on the radio side and on Facebook. Unfortunately, that game we found out around 12 noon got moved to Greater Latrobe for a 3.30 start. We couldn't make it up there to broadcast the game yesterday. Another 3-2 on the way. Line drive right up the middle into center field. C.J. Guest will charge on here for Laurel Highlands, and it's a leadoff single for Batista, who continues his hot start. Again, came in with a 353 average single there. Gives the Wildcats a base runner here in the top half of the first inning. And then I'll bring up Louis Amatucci to the plate for the Wildcats. Junior catcher batting 264 with four RBIs. And we'll see if Patronus will have his eye here on the very speedy Batista. Patronus, first pitch. Missed a little low. Good block there from Sevi Vecchiola is doing the catching today for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Count 1-0 now. Patronus to Amatucci. Patronus clean look over at first being a lefty, and he'll throw that way just to keep Batista close to the bag. And now our base umpire pointing over into the Greater Latrobe dugout. Not sure what that was all about. Maybe one of the guys in the on-deck circle wasn't in the proper position. No, I guess the dugout a little too chirpy down there. Let's go 1-0 and again here to Amatucci. Swing and a miss. Evens things up at 1-1. One one. You have Batista, who's the center fielder, actually wearing an oven mitt. Looks like on his left hand. Might have actually injured that hand. That almost looks like something you'd use to pull a pie out of the oven. Another step off here from Patronus. Mustang scheduled to play a non-conference game here on Thursday. And then they'll have Albert Gallatin Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Another throw over to first and head first slide back safely again from Batista. Tuesday's game against Albert Gallatin will be here at Laurel Highlands. We'll travel to Albert Gallatin on Wednesday. Colonials lost last night down in Bailey Park to Uniontown. Breaking ball, catching the strike zone there to take it to one and two now from Patronus to Amatucci. Patronus taking his time, looking for an out here in the top half of the first. 
Runner going. They'll make the throw over to first. It goes wide. Sliding into second now. Heading to third is Batista. So a metal air there. You had Patronas step off. Made the throw over to Braden O'Brien at first. Went wide of O'Brien. They could have actually had Batista dead to rights. I think you have to call that E1 on the wide throw. Allowing Batista to get down in a scoring position. And the next pitch there to Amatucci hit on the ground to short. Frank Kula playing short today. Solid throw over to Braden O'Brien. You can score it 6-3, but give Amatucci an RBI. His fifth of the season as he drives in Eric Batista for the game's first run. So now the base is empty, but one away here in the top half of the first inning with Logan Bradish coming to the plate. Bradish batting 353 with two RBIs. Senior pitcher. Patronus winds and fires. That one just missed the plate. Makes the count to 1-0. Deep breath now from Patronus. 1-0 pitch on the way, and this ball snared there by Tyler Sankovic. The solid throw over to first to Braden O'Brien to retire. Logan Bradish 5-3 for the inning second out. Now bring up Tony Massari, the senior first baseman, coming in with a 3-12 average and four RBIs. Two outs, one already across for the Wildcats. Patronus to Masari. Try to dig that one out of the dirt, swing and a miss. Takes the count to 0-1. A lot of seniors on this greater Latrobe team, including Masari. Making his last go-around for the Wildcats here in 2023. Now the 0-1 on the way, and that one golf foul over the Mustang dugout. Takes it to 0-2. Now the Mustangs trying to get out of the opening inning here with just minimal damage being done. 0-2 pitch. That ball hit right on a line and caught there by Parker Hoff. So a good job from Parker Hoff to make the catch and get out of the inning with the Mustangs just surrendering one here in the top half of the first. So we'll go to the bottom of the first inning. A one to nothing lead for the Greater Latrobe Wildcats over the Laurel Highlands Mustangs, again here on Facebook Live and the Triple Live High School Sports Network. Mama Ruka's Pizza Shop, located on Barton Mill Road in Union Town, is your prime place to enjoy local high school sports. Mama Ruka's is family-owned and operated, where pride of ownership certainly shows. The Samson family carries on the tradition of homemade pizza, salads, subs, and wings. Mama Ruka's open Monday through Saturday, 4 to 10, for indoor and outdoor dining and takeout. You can phone 724-438-9066 or visit Mama Ruka's Pizza for their menu. Looking for the highest quality products for lower prices? Shop and save in Uniontown has the widest selection of brands and the freshest offerings around. They specialize in your family's grocery needs. Take advantage and sign up for their Shop and Save Perks card to get money-saving benefits and discounts on gas. Shop and Save, located on 150 Walnut Hill Road. They're open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Come on down and get your shopping on at Shop and Save in Uniontown. Our game coverage also brought to you today by the Radcliffe Law Firm, located at 648 Morgan. Town Road in Uniontown, proud supporters of local high school sports, the Radcliffe Law Firm. Brian Morozak along with you, Matt Sapienza behind the camera, Frank Kula helping us out with our score hub today. We hope Gary Frankhauser is going to join us at some point today up here in the press box as the Mustang high school baseball season opening up. Again, we'll have more high school baseball for you next week, including our first game on the radio side. That'll be next Tuesday with the Bell Vernon Leopards traveling to Uniontown to take on the Red Raiders at Bailey Park. That'll be a 7 o'clock start. We're planning to have, with a little help from our friends of the South Union Township Sports Network, digital coverage of the Mustangs and the Albert Gallatin Colonials Tuesday at 4 o'clock as well next week here in all the same outlets that you're watching the broadcast on here today. So moving now to the bottom half of the first inning, Mustangs coming to the plate with C.J. Gask leading things off. Facing Logan Bradish 
for the Greater Latrobe Wildcats. Bradish's first pitch, fastball high, 1-0 to Gask. Setting the Mustang lineup, C.J. leads things off. Frank Cool with the shortstop bat second. Tyler Sankovich playing third base, batting third. Braden O'Brien playing first base in the cleanup spots. And that pitch in there for a strike. Evens things up at 1-1. One one. Sevi Vecchiola catching batting fifth. Patrick Cavanaugh, the DH, batting sixth. Shane Layton in right field batting seventh. Plays Krisner in left field batting eighth as that one skips away. Count now 2-1, and one, and Parker Hoff rounding out the lineup. The sophomore playing second base and batting ninth. Defensively for Greater Latrobe, Jacob Kramer out in left. Eric Batista in center, Eli Boring in right. Riley Smith, who got the start yesterday on the mound for Greater Latrobe, he's playing third. And that pitch, and therefore a strike as well to take us to 2-2. Two and two. Cooper Bassiano playing short. His brother Dante playing second. They're both sons of the head coach, Matt. Tony Masari, the first baseman for the Wildcats today. Logan Bradish pitching and Louis Amatucci catching for the Greater Latrobe Wildcats. And we're full of 3-2. and two. Here from Bradish to C.J. Gesk. And the payoff pitch. Swing going to miss strike three, and down goes C.J. for the first down to this bottom of the first inning. And if you're new to high school baseball, we play seven innings of regulation. You really can't afford to fall behind too early. Mustangs down one to nothing as we work with one outs. In the bottom of the first inning, and Frank Kula batting here from the left side will take the first pitch high and outside from Logan Branish as the count moves to 1-0. Kula 5'11", 175 senior shortstop. Had a home run yesterday, two-run shot against these Wildcats, and rips one here into the left center field gap, and it gets past Eric Batista. Batista able to regain with a rally coming in, but it's a stand-up double for Frank Kula. And the Mustangs in business with one out here in the bottom of the first inning. Just what Laurel Highlands needed. After falling behind one to nothing early on here today and losing yesterday, getting a big hit from Kula to bounce back now with Tyler Sankovich, another lefty, coming to the plate. And Ty swings the first pitch, actually nubbed it off the Inside of the batten, ball went and played pinball with a couple of cars up there in the lots. Count moves to 0 and 1. Actually, credit Batista out there in center field did a nice job to kind of regain after that hit from Kula got behind him. Probably fortunate the turf out there a little soft right now after some of the weekend rains we sustained. Or Frank could have easily had an opportunity to get down to third base. Count now one and one to Sankovic after the last pitch missed. Now long look in here from Bradish. The one one pitch to Sank. And therefore a strike takes it to one and two. Sank batting 214. Four RBIs already on this young season. Mustangs playing just their fifth game of the year here today. I look back at second. 1-1 one, one on, or check that 1-2 on the way. High and outside takes us to 2-2. Two two. Braden O'Brien due up in the on-deck circle for Laurel Highlands. Now the 2-2 two, two from Bradish to Sankovic. Pitch just missed. Now we're full of 3-2. and two. A big pitch here on both sides early on in this game. Bradish glanced back at Kula again at second. A payoff pitch here to Sank, and Sank just got a piece of it. It was a little low, but Sank was doing a nice job there just to continue the at-bat. Checking it foul. It'll be three and two here once again. Now the payoff pitch once again. Breaking ball misses high and outside for ball four. So the Mustangs now two on with one out, down one to nothing. In the bottom of the first inning with their cleanup hitter, Braden O'Brien, coming to the plate. O'Brien, 6'3", 200-pound senior first baseman. 
has gotten off to a nice start this season. 364 average. Three RBIs. Good opportunity to add to that right now for the Mustangs. Cool on second. Sank on first. First pitch swinging there from O'Brien. Hit high in the air to left center field. And it'll be Batista who will make the catch with a gun coming in. Sends it right down to Riley Smith at third. That was dead on. So no opportunity for Kula or Sankovic to advance. It goes F8 off a well-hit ball from O'Brien for the inning second out. And now Sebi Vecchiola coming to the plate, just a freshman. Six foot, 180 pounds. Just one at bat so far this season. He's 0 for 1. Starting catcher today. See if you can make some hay here for the Mustangs. First pitch misses high. Count moves to 1-0. And, oh. and the thought coming into the game today is we'd see Devin Kravoski on the hill for Laurel Highlands, but Kravoski a little arm tenderness, unable to go, and certainly don't want to risk his arm at all here early on in the season, opening conference series. 1-0 pitch missed again inside, 2-0. So Paxton Patronus getting the start. Yielded one in the top of the first inning, and the Mustangs an opportunity to get a couple back here. And a good rip from Vecchiola, sitting that one foul. Count now two and one from Bradish. To Vecchiola. Vecchiola, the fifth Mustang to bat here in this bottom of the first inning and sends another one foul to take us to two and two. A big spot here for the freshman. You're seeing some Mustang underclassmen tested here in this opening series. Patronus on the mound and now Vecchiola at the plate. Patronus, even though he's a senior, hasn't seen much Varsity playing time here at Laurel Highlands. Another step off here from Bradish. A 2-2 pitch on the way. Bradish to Vecchiola. It's low, but Vecchiola went at Jason. And he'll get tagged out after the ball was scooped up there from Amatucci. So it goes as a strikeout. For the third out of the inning, so the Mustangs leave two stranded, come up empty here in the bottom of the first inning. And after one, it's Greater Latrobe one, and Laurel Highlands nothing here on the Sea Harper Auto Group High School Sports Night. When your car is damaged, the name to remember is Ted Sova and Son Body and Fender Repair. Newly expanded to serve you better, Ted Sova and Son offers complete collision coverage, minor to major repairs, frame and unibody repair, and glass installation. They will gladly provide estimates, and will work with your insurance company. Family owned and operated for over 48 years. Call 724-437-2351 for Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair. Proud to support Laurel Highlands Mustang Baseball. Good times, good food. It's all at Potter's Bar and Grill, Morgantown Street in Uniontown. Family owned and operated, Potter's has been a staple in the Uniontown community since 1950. Get out of the house and make your night, next night out at Potter's Bar and Grill. Morgantown Street in Uniontown, phone 724-438-9835 or visit Potter's on Facebook and we'll see you at Potter's. You can get the family care that is right for you with the WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Primary Care. Uniontown Hospital provides not only emergency medical aid, they offer a variety of primary care options and locations to meet your needs, whether you're feeling under the weather, coming in for your annual checkup, the WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Primary Care is ready to care for all of your routine medical needs. Please visit uniontownhospital.com for available locations and contact information. So one to nothing, the Greater Latrobe Wildcats leading the Laurel Highlands Mustangs has moved to the top of the second inning. It's hitters 5, 6, and 7. Eli Boring, Jacob Kramer, and Tyler Fazekas do up. Patronus still on the hill for the Mustangs. Finds the strike zone on the first pitch there to Eli Boring. The sophomore right fielder came into the game with a 353 average. Now Patronus is 0-1 here to Boring. Breaking ball. And that one just nubbed foul. 
Takes us to 0-2. Matronis is looking confident on the mound here for the Mustangs. 0-2 pitch now on the way, and that one well hit down the right field side. And a quick relay coming in there from Shane Layton and a leadoff single to right for Eli Boring. Second hit of the game for the Greater Latrobe Wildcats. And then I'll bring up Jacob Kramer, sophomore left fielder, coming in with a 182 average and two RBIs. Mustangs have to watch for the bunt in this situation. See if the Wildcats decide to play a little small ball. And Kramer's going to swing away and pop this one high in the air in a right center field and getting under it, making the catch there is C.J. Gesk for the inning's first out. Good job out there in center field from C.J. We've won away here in the top of the second inning with Tyler Fizikas coming to the plate, senior designated hitter. Hitting the cover off the ball here early on in the season. 400 average, three RBIs for Greater Latrobe. And the Wildcats 3-2, and 1-0 and oh in conference play. Mustangs looking for their first win of the season. Patronus' first pitch here to Fizikas. It's on the way, and that one nubbed down the third baseline, just going foul. Takes the count to 0-1. Now Patronus to regroup. Now step off here from Paxton. And the next pitch here to Fazekas. And this ball hit on the ground again to short. Got through Kula. Into left field. A quick relay coming in there from Krisner, but safe down at third is the lead runner, Boring. So the second error committed today by the Mustangs. Third You'll have runners on first and third for Greater Latrobe with just one out. And Riley Smith coming to the plates. Junior batting just 0-91, playing third base, and he got the start on the mound for the Wildcats yesterday. Runners on the corners. First pitch high and out of the strike zone to Smith. Count 1-0. and oh. Get our live video stream courtesy of State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman and Movement Physiotherapy. 1-0 pitch here to Riley Smith. Oh, check swing, ruled a strike. Takes us to 1-1. One one. Other conference games today, Ringgold taking on Bell Vernon, Uniontown taking on Albert Gallatin. Red Raiders won 6-2 yesterday over Albert Gallatin. Bell Vernon, a nine-inning, 2-1 win. Runner going to be cut off there by Cool on the throw just to make sure that we're going to have Boring try to attempt to go home. But Fizikis safe at second. Now you'll have two in scoring position. One out here in the top of the second inning. And the Wildcats try and add to their one to nothing lead over the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Now the Mustangs bringing the infield in. Even early on in this game, down one to nothing, Trying to prevent a... Another run coming across here at home. Next pitch here to Riley Smith, breaking ball. Well, high and inside, almost a little throwaway there from Patronus. Takes the count now to two and two. Patronus, long look into the catcher, Sebi Vecchiola. 2 2 pitch on the way. Fastball just a little high. They missed by too much, but it will take us full to three and two. If you have first base open but don't want to load up the bases, even though you have Dante Bassiano batting ninth, he's batting 357. And the payoff pitch here to Riley Smith. 
Caught the inside corner for strike three, and boy, the Mustangs needed that one. Second out of the inning, first strikeout for Patronus, and we have two away. Boy, if the Mustangs could sneak out of this top of the second with no damage being done. Really be a positive sign here, I think, for the rest of the way. Now Dante Bassiano coming to the plate. First pitch swinging there. Pops it up in the infield. Charging in from first. And it goes actually off the catcher's glove. Sevi Vecchio unable to make the catch. Wow, tough break there for Laurel Highlands. Thought you might have Braden O'Brien with a better shot at it. Charging in from first base. But Vecchio unable to hang on. Will go as a strike off the foul ball. The count moves to 0-1. But a missed opportunity there with an infield pop-up to end the inning for Laurel Highlands. Now 0-1 here to Dante Bassiano. Swing and a miss after a big cut. Takes the count to 0-2. So the Mustangs still an opportunity to finish this off. Now the 0-2 pitch. Patronus to... Bassiano, breaking ball, is tying inside. Again, Patronus maybe putting one up there, just trying to get Bassiano to chase a bit. Got now one and two. Pitch on the way, and this one hit high in the air down the first baseline. Braden O'Brien getting under it, but it will go over the Fence and out of play. It's just ruled a foul ball. Again, with our broadcast location, it's tough to pick up the stuff on the right side. Don't really have a view of right field. And the count remaining one and two from Patronus to Bassiano. And that ball was in the dirt. It was caught. It will be ruled strike three, and the Mustangs get out of the inning with no damage being done. So a nice job there from Sevi Vecchiola. Kind of redeemed himself, scooping that one up for the strike three. And you have Paxton Patronis, who gets back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the inning. So the Wildcats come up empty in the top of the second. So we'll move to the bottom of the second. And it's one to nothing. Greater Latrobe over Laurel Highlands here on the CR Parada Group High School Sports Night. Our game coverage today being brought to you in part by Melinda Delarose, candidate for judge of the Fayette County Court of Common Police, an assistant district attorney, tough prosecutor, and trusted local attorney. Melinda Delarose is asking for your vote for judge. The Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 at Hopwoods is a proud supporter of local high school sports. In fact, their annual charity golf outing has contributed dozens of scholarships to Fayette County students. The Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 at Hopwood. John Marietta is ready to ride his way in becoming your Fayette County Commissioner. He is firm on the Bill of Rights, our Constitution, faith and freedom, and standing up for Fayette County. Pennsylvania needs good leaders. Courage is contagious. On Tuesday, March 16th, vote for John Marietta for Fayette County Commissioner. This message has been paid for by John Marietta for We the People. So you move now to the bottom of the second inning. It's Patrick Cavanaugh, Shane Layton, and Blaze Krisner due up for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs who trail the Greater Latrobe Wildcats by a score of one to nothing. Brian Morozak along with you. Matt Sapienza behind the camera. We put out an APV for Gary Frankhauser. And you have Patrick Cavanaugh taking the first pitch for ball one from Logan Bradish. Count 1-0. Oh. Hitters 6, 7, and 8 due up for the Mustangs here in this half inning. Count now even at 1-1. One and one. One one on the way, and therefore a strike. Cal moves to one and two. Now the
And the one two on the way, fastball. Sent foul. A one and two here again. Kavanaugh, 6'3, 175 pound senior. Batting 400. He'll nub this one into the Greater Latrobe dugout. Count remains one and two. One two pitch again. Swing and a miss. Strike three. They're going to say it was foul tip, so they'll have to make the throw down to first. We'll go into the books as a strikeout. Two three. It's a third strikeout for Bradish in the first outs of this bottom of the second inning. Now Shane Layton coming to the plate. 6'2", 180-pound junior batting 333 with an RBI. Playing right field today. Did he get hit with that first pitch? Yes, he did. So Layton struck by the pitch from Bradish. And the Mustang dugout said, hey, way to use your head, kid, because I think it actually caught his head. Good to see Layton with a smile on his face walking down the first base line. Seems all right. And the Mustangs with a base runner and one out. Here in the bottom of the second inning. Now Blaze Krisner coming to the plate. This is the third at bat for Krisner on the season. 5'11", 170-pound senior. Facing Logan Branish, batting from the eighth position of the Mustang lineup. Takes the first pitch inside for ball one. Parker Hoff in the on-deck circle for the Mustangs. Now the 1-0, missed again, takes us to 2-0 here. Bradish to Krisner. Mustangs down one to nothing. Now Bradish is 2-0. Maybe a throw over to first before that. Head first slide back safely there from Layton. Bradish set to go again. Another inside pitch that almost clipped Krisner. Had to get out of the way of it. Takes us to 3 0. So the Mustangs, an opportunity here. Getting all production out of the bottom of their lineup. Trying to get a couple of guys on here as we work in the bottom of the second inning with Laurel Highlands trailing 1 0. 3 0 pitch. Krisner taking all the way. It's in there for a strike and takes us to 3 1. Now Bradish sent with the 3-1 here to Blaze Krisner. And Krisner swing get a miss. Takes us full now to 3-2. and two. Give Bradish a lot of credit working his way back into the at-bat. Runner going. 3-2 pitch on the way. Swing and a miss from Krisner. Throw down a second. That one hopped out of the glove of Dante Bassiano. And you'll have a stolen base there for Shane Layton. So Krisner strikes out for the second out of the inning. That's the fourth strikeout already for Bradish. And now you have Parker Hoff coming to the plate. Hoff looking for his first hit of the season, 0 for 9, coming into this at bat. 5'11", 190-pound sophomore, playing second base today. But a two-step leadoff second there for Layton. And the first pitch, a strike to Hoff. And count it 0-1. Another swing and a miss from Parker. Takes us to 0-2. Hoff getting some instruction from 
Mustang head coach Brad Yeoman, who's down there coaching third. Trying to get a little confidence here early on in the season. Sometimes it's tough, even though the Mustangs had a trip down to Florida. Kind of limited with the number of real-life practices you get in here early in the season. And boy, the Mustangs use a hit here from Hoff. 0-2 pitch from Bradish. Swing and a miss, strike three. So Bradish ends up picking up his fifth strikeout of the game. Sending down Hoff. Mustangs missed opportunity. In fact, for the first two innings, Laurel Highland stranding runners in scoring position and will move to the top of the third. The score is still greater. Latrobe won. Laurel Highlands nothing here on the Sea Harbor Auto Group High School Sports Night. Attorneys Bobby Gordon, Shane Gannon, and Tim Wood at Watson Mundorf LLP wish the Laurel Highlands Mustangs and all of our local teams the best of luck this year. Watson Mundorf is a premier regional law firm whose experience and expertise empower it not only to be an advocate for its clients, but also provide them with exceptional service to exceed expectations. With offices in Uniontown and Connellsville, they're local and here to serve you. Phone 724-628-8882 for attorneys Bobby Gordon, Shane Gannon, and Tim Witt at Watson Mundorf LLP. Does your car sound like it's saying, trade me in, trade me in every time you go to start it up? Well, go to Ford of Uniontown and trade it in. That's right, Ford of Uniontown is ready to assist you with a new or pre-owned car, truck, or SUV purchase. They have all the deals, all the inventory, and they're ready to serve you. So listen to your car the next time you hear it say, trade me in, and head to Ford of Uniontown. Also, it looks like COVID might be still with us for a while, so time to order your COVID tests from Peachin's Pharmacy. You'll have them when you need them. Peachin's Pharmacy can also help you get free COVID tests. Just call them at 724-626-9600. That's 724-626-9600. You can stop into the pharmacy inside the Peachin Market in Connellsville. So moving now to the top of the third inning, and for Greater Latrobe, it's the top of the order. Eric Batista, Louis Amatucci, and Logan Bradish on the hill. And starting his third inning of work on the mound for the Mustangs is Paxton Patronis. And the first pitch sent foul from Eric Batista. Started off the game for Greater Latrobe with a single to center field. Ended up advancing his position on the base paths with a Mustang throwing error and ended up scoring the game's only run. Patronis is 0-1 now to Batista. A little check swing and therefore a strike. Takes us to 0-2. Matronis coming through, getting strikeouts of Riley Smith and Dante Bassiano to end the top of the second inning. Now the 0-2 here, a little breaking ball, just missed low and outside. Takes us now to 1-2. Brian Morozak along with you. Gary Frankhauser said he's on the way. He'll make it for the middle innings. Ready in the top of the third. Matt Sapienza behind the camera. Frank Kula helping us out in the score hub today as well. 1-2 pitch. This nubbed foul again from Batista. Count remains 1-2. and two. Oh, They ruled out a ball there, Frank. I thought he got a piece of it. I'm blocked here by a couple pieces of wood. <laughs> I thought he nubbed it foul. It bounced off the plates. <laughs> so we're 2-2. Two and two. Take all the help I can get out here today. Now the 2-2, two -two, that one's low. We'll move to 3-2. and two. Got our live video stream courtesy of Movement Physiotherapy today and State Farm Agent Lauren Yeoman. Three, 3-2 on the way. That's a called strike three. Catching the inside corner there, Patronus. Sending down Batista, and that's three straight strikeouts for Paxton Patronus. Mustangs will take that, and Louis Amatucci now will come to the plate. Amatucci picked up his fifth RBI of the season, driving in Batista back in the first. A first pitch here to Amatucci, a little low. Takes us to 1-0. Much different than the game we saw yesterday, at least to start things off, where Greater Latrobe down Laurel Highlands 13-5. Just one to nothing here in the 
top of the third inning. Another one a little low. 2 0 now to Louis Amatucci. I think Patronus will be looking for a fresh baseball. Going to bring in the catcher Sevi Vecchiola here as well for a little meeting on the mound. Don't have the pitch clocks here in the high school game like we see in the major leagues now, but I will say you look through the first four or five games of the major league baseball season, certainly speeded up the game sometimes to as much as 30 minutes a game. And I think for all the fans out there, certainly welcome after some of the long games we've witnessed over the last couple of seasons. Another one low, 3-0 and now to Louis Amatucci from Paxton Patronus. And you wonder for Patronus what the Mustang coaching staff would be looking at as far as the number of innings they'd like to get him to work here today early on in the season. Does bounce back there with a nice strike. Take it to 3-1 and one now to Louis Amatucci. And one out here in the top of the third. Wildcats leading the Mustangs one to nothing. That ball hit high in the air to right field on a line and caught there by the Mustang right fielder Shane Layton for the inning's second out. So now four straight Wildcats have been retired. Smith and Dante Bassiano to end the second, and now Batista and Amatucci to start the third, and that'll bring up Logan Bradish now. The base is empty. And two outs here in the top of the third inning. Wildcats a one to nothing lead over the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Bradish grounded out 5-3 back in the opening inning. Mound opponents of Patronus here today. And quickly the count 0-1. Bradish came in with a 353 average and two RBIs. Now the 0-1 pitch here misses a low and takes us to 1-1. One one. Gary Frankhauser now joining us. We appreciate it. Now the 1-1. One this one. is high and inside. Get you plugged in here, Gary. And welcome aboard today. Well, thanks. Sorry I'm late, but you know, it's all right. Your regular job sometimes work gets in yeah, the way. And seeing a pretty good game so far. Mustangs trailing one to nothing. Lone run you missed back in the top of the first inning with Louis Amatucci driving in Eric Batista. A surprise starter on the mound for the Mustangs today as well. Gary Paxton Patronus with a little arm discomfort from Devin Kravoski. Patronus getting the start but has pitched well for Laurel Highlands. You now trying to finish off this top of the third inning and a fly ball kind of coming our way here from Logan Bradish. A no play on it there from Braden O'Brien. What's the count over there, Frank? Two, two and two now to Logan Bradish, senior well, pitcher. Glad I could uh, make it when I did try to relieve Brian here, <laughs> suffering a little bit. Under no, that's the, all right. Under I'm doing a lot better today than I was yesterday. And with the time change on these games, it really threw a snag into yep. everything. 2-2 two, two pitch. Missed there. 3 and 2 now to Logan Bradish. Now, we were scheduled here 4 o'clock yesterday at Laurel Highlands. We were supposed to be up at Latrobe at 7 o'clock tonight. And that's how this one. my schedule yep. was full <laughs> up until 4.30 just <laughs> 10 minutes ago. I appreciate you hustling over here in the 3-2 pitch. Was that foul tipped? Foul yeah, foul ball. So your main three and two. Here we have Matt Sapienza behind the camera. Frank Kula helping us out with the score hub today. Now the three two pitch here from Patronus to Bradish. And again, fouled off. We'll do three and two here once again. Mentioned the Mustangs, Gary, coming in 0-4, but 0-1 in conference. But if you go back to last year, they lost those 
opening two games of the season to West Mifflin and ended up bouncing back rather nicely and, of course, made it into the state quarterfinal round of the playoffs. I'm sure they had some pretty stu stiff competition down in Florida. For sure. Played a couple of teams, actually all three opponents from the state of Illinois. Another one fouled off there from Bradish. So Bradish making Patronus throw a number of pitches here. I was just going to mention that, just getting here now and uh, dealing with just this one batter. This is about a 10-pitch appearance. <laughs> All you've seen is Patronus to Bradish so far. We'll do it here once again, 3-2. Yeah, this one does. misses low and ball four. So Greater Latrobe, a base runner now with two outs here in the top of the third inning. And their cleanup hitter, Tony Masari, coming to the plate. Masari, senior first baseman, batting 312. They put the bat on the ball yesterday from what I could see in here. They uh, played it, what, 13. 13 runs. We have a courtesy runner here. It's number eight. That's Mason, Mason Leonard. Leonard. Yep. So Leonard to run for the pitcher, Bradish. Sophomore outfielder. As Yeoman will head to the mound, probably more giving Patronus a break than anything else. In our live video stream today, courtesy of Movement Physiotherapy and State Farm Agent Lauren Yeoman. Appreciate all the local businesses supporting us with this Facebook exclusive today, the Laurel Highlands Mustangs and the Greater Latrobe Wildcats. We're hoping to bring you both Laurel Highlands and Uniontown coming up next Tuesday. The Mustangs in a Facebook-only game here at 4 o'clock. Hoping to get a, Jerry Dupe maybe back for that one. Gary, next Possibly, Tuesday, yeah. hope he's doing well. If not, hopefully get a little help from maybe Tiffany or somebody else over at South Union for their camera for that one. And then we'll also have the Uniontown Bell Vernon game, which will be on the radio as well next Tuesday night. Hopefully we can get some nice weather like they're having here tonight for the contest next Tuesday as well. Now Patronus, first pitch there to Tony Masari misses for ball one. Masari, a line drive to Parker Hoft and the Opening inning. Some familiar athletic names for the Mustangs. Yes. Spanned multiple sports. Throw over to first. Head first slide back safely there from the courtesy runner, Leonard. Sharp uniforms on the Greater Latrobe side. Like those bright oranges, black numbers, white trim, gray pants. Mustangs new unis, I think, as well for 2023. Sporting the uh, flag on the back of the yeah. uniforms. Both schools. Got now 2-0 oh now to Tony Masari from Paxton Patronus. Deep breath there from Paxton. A little step off. And Leonard heads back to the bag. Leonard getting a nice lead out here at first base. Well past the notch in the grass. A couple steps past, and he is way out there. About, Look for him to go. About three-step lead. And he's yeah. going to run. Pitch was a fastball called strike. Throw down to second, not even close. Leonard was speedy and able to get in a second, even though the Mustang saw that one coming. Huge lead and uh, really no chance for the Mustang catcher, Vecchiola. It's after the called strike, counting out two and one. Again, we work with two outs here in the top of the third. Game has slowed down a little bit with Greater Latrobe still leading Laurel Highlands by a score of one to nothing. They knew I was late. Yes, <laughs> trying to <laughs> hold it up a little bit for you. The two one here to Masari, and Masari sends this one on the ground to third at Sankovic. Called foul the, ball. Oh, foul ball. Wow. It's amazing how that ball got all the way out to third base after it. I think it went off his foot. Yep. The way it was rolling down, there would have been a routine third outs for Laurel Highlands. I think the Mustangs certainly made the right move today with not pitching Kravosky if he was a little sore and had a little elbow tenderness here today, especially being the opening conference weekend, Gary. Exactly. Swing and a miss. Ball was foul tip, but caught, so that's strike three to end the inning. So no damage done, and we'll head to the bottom of the third inning, one to nothing. The Greater Latrobe Wildcats leading the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. We'll let Gary call a couple of innings coming up next here on the CR Parada Group 
High School Sports Night. Let you know that you can contact Uniontown agent Russ Blejo, your local Allstate agent, for a free quote on home and car insurance near you. Located on Lebanon Avenue in Uniontown, you can call Russ at 724-439-9700. Remember, you're in good hands with Russ Blejo and Allstate. Better let me read those, Brian. You can you're do gonna, some of those. You're, you're, I don't want to uh, <laughs> stretch those tonsils further than they need to be stretched. I was I tied mean, tonsillitis on yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, that's right. Or on that's, uh, Saturday, sorry. And uh, we don't want to send you into surgery here no. in the middle of the game. So. No. <laughs> Sending also brought to you by First Federal of Green. Be prepared for spring with the help of First Federal Savings Loan of Green County with a home improvement loan, a home equity loan, or home equity line of credit. You can finally upgrade that old furnace. Well, we don't need the furnace anymore, no. I hope. Take care of that leaking roof or replace those outdated floors. Apply online at ffgc.bank, First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Green County. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 458729. So CJ Guest, leadoff hitter for the Mustangs, stepping in, facing Logan Bradish for the uh, Wildcats of Latrobe. Latrobe, if you prefer. Yes. It's kind of six, one, half dozen, the other, depending on who you're talking with. Exactly. Already with five strikeouts, Bradish being effective. Fastball high and inside for ball one. Outfield straight away and deep for Gesk. He showed some power last year. 1-0 offering. Low and outside, 2-0. Gary, talking to a lot of folks, Greater Latrobe might be one of the favorites in the conference this season. Well, with the numbers they put up yesterday, hard to argue with that. Yeah, really tough coming in. You know Bell Vernon, they're always solid. Ringgold played the... Leopards right down to the wire yesterday. Uniontown very improved. They were in the playoffs a season ago, and Albert Gallatin expected to be competitive as well. Pitch high and inside, but fouled back by Gesk. Runs the count to two and one. From the windup, Bradish delivers, and there's a shot to second base. Bobbled at second base, and Gesk will beat that out. So we'll have to charge an error there to the second baseman. That's Dante Bassiano. Yep. Dante Bassiano. i got to get these pronunciations here. So yeah, both Connor and Dante, and they're sons of the head coach, Matt. So on on the air is Gesk leading off the bottom half of the third inning for the Mustangs, bringing up the shortstop, Frank Kula. From the stretch now. Bradish deals and guess goes quickly and he's going to slide in head first and be safe at second with a first pitch stolen base. Showed great speed there to throw a little bit on the first base side. The uh, shortstop, Bradice, Bassiano. That's Connor Bassiano. Yeah, yep. Connor yep. Bassiano made a nice stop but unable to make any kind of a tag. On C.J. Guess, so now in scoring position for Kula. Batting left-handed, he's going to turn around, face, try to bunt, but it takes ball two. He had a home run yesterday, Gary, in that game against Greater Latrobe. That's Cooper, not Connor, it's short. I'm sorry, I have that doctor's handwriting. Cooper, okay, yeah. <laughs> I got it, I got it. I can only read it so I can, I can only write it so I can read it. Ball three, high and inside, so being a little bit careful with Frank Kula. I was talking to his dad, who's right, sitting right next to you, and he thought you were calling the game yesterday. That's why he homered. He wanted to give you a nice home. There you call. go. But you weren't there. <laughs> I got him. I got him. <laughs> Here's a 3-0, taken for ball four, four-pitch ball to Frank, four-pitch walk to Frank Kula. Puts two men on with nobody out. It's going to bring up Tyler Sankovic, third baseman, batting at uh, 214. The senior has played a lot of baseball for the Mustangs yes, yes. over his four years here. How about the success his brother's been having Absolutely, as well? Absolutely, yes. Big lead over here at first for Kula. Guest bouncing around out there at second. Got Bassianos trying to sneak in from all sides. Yes. <laughs> Takes ball one, so a little bit of a 
struggle with the control here in the bottom of the third. Bradish trying to find the strike zone. Here's the pitch. Ball inside. Didn't get the call on that one. Bradish thought he might have had the inside corner, but didn't get the call. 2-0. They're going to have a little conversation now at the mound as the Greater Latrobe coaching staff will try to settle Bradish down, maybe again try to get him to take a little bit of a break. Pretty much the analysis here is make him put it in play. Walks will be the nemesis of any baseball game, and especially at the high school level. So the coaching staff will head back to the dugout, and all of the infield players who joined the conversation will move back to their respective positions. Playing behind the runner at first now is Tony Masori. And runner goes, throw down to third, and he's going to be out at third. Wow. Not sure the thinking there, and I don't think Coach Yeoman is thinking that also. Not sure that that was a wise move with nobody out, runners on first and second. Pitcher having a little bit of a control problem, and that's going to be a first out of the inning at third base. I believe that was a strike. We'll get the count here momentarily. High and outside. See if we can get the count. It lost our feed for a moment. Uh, Gary just got it back on. So I don't know if you want to recap for anybody that might have missed yeah, something. CJ took off from second and was gunned down at third for the first out. Back diving in safely is Kula at first on the play over to first. At the plate is Sankovic with one out now on the caught stealing at third. Three and one's the count on Sankovic. Might see Kula take off here to try to get in scoring position again. High and outside, so that's ball four. So now bases would have been loaded with nobody out, but CJ with the unsuccessful steal try at third leaves it with first and second now. Kula at second, Sankovic at first. Braden O'Brien, the cleanup hitter, will get an opportunity with one out. Back-to-back -back walks by Bandish, Brandish. I'm sorry. From the stretch, first pitch. Ball outside, high and outside. So again, difficulty with the control. Gets a signal from his catcher. Bow back for the first strike to O'Brien. One and one. One out. Mustangs trying to match the one nothing lead for Greater Latrobe here in the bottom half of the third inning. Opportunity that you hope would not be lost. Strike called at the letters for one ball, two strike, fastball. O'Brien didn't like the call, but Bradish getting the call there. One, two attempt now. Here's the pitch. Drilled him in the back. Wow. Top of the shoulder, his left shoulder just kind of Leaned back and took that one, and that's going to be another free base for the Mustangs. That could have been a run without a hit, but now we have bases loaded. You had a Leighton that got hit in the head, Gary, I think right before you got here back in the bottom of the second inning. So two hit batsmen already for Bradish. Brings up Vecchiola, the catcher for the Mustangs, with the bases loaded and one out. First pitch, high and inside, way out of the strike zone. So 
big time struggles here so far. And it's great of Latrobe will send some players down the line to try to get somebody loose here quickly. One oh pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Good cut. But going to have a little conversation at the mound, and that might be an opportunity to allow the pitcher down the line to get a few more reps in. One out, one ball, one strike. Sacks are juiced. Yes, they are. <laughs> One one pitch in the dirt. Good stop back there by the catcher for Greater Latrobe. And that's An Antonucci. Is that how you say it? Yep. No, Amatucci. I'm Amatucci. Sorry. Amatucci. Man, I can't read your writing. This season. <laughs> Liz. Get it earlier next time. Two balls, one strike. <laughs> Just missing outside. Three and one. Bases are loaded. You want to get a perfect pitch here if you're Vecchiola. One that you can at least drive to the outfield. Defenders are up at third and first. Foul back. Full count now. Key spot in the game now here for the Mustangs to try to either tie the game or take and lead here in the Bottom half of the third inning. No hits in the inning, but four base runners. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Wow. So Vecchiola goes down on a high fastball. So Cavanaugh will come to the plate now with two outs. Well, Gary, in every inning so far, the Mustangs have had a runner in scoring position. Several this inning. Yep. Still donuts up on the scoreboard. Brad is trying to work his way out of this. That ball's high and outside for ball one to Patrick Cavanaugh. Then you go back in the first inning. You had Cool with the double, and then Sankovic got on with a walk, and then you move on to the second inning. You had Layton got hit by a pitch and ended up stealing a base and getting in a scoring position. Three strikeouts that inning ended, and there's a – Fly ball to right field, coming in, making the catch, and eliminating the rally opportunity for the Mustangs. Eli Boring. Eli Boring in right field. So Bradish works his way out of a huge jam. The Mustangs do not score, bring six players to the plate, and we'll go to the top half of the fourth with Greater Latrobe still on top, one to nothing. Gary, I'll give you a little break now. Let you know the UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community. They treat sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, sprains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. You can call their office with a prescription from your doctor scheduled by direct access, and they can contact your doctor for you, 724-437-7500. South Union Township Supervisor Rick Vernon knows there's nothing more exciting than high school sports. He also knows that athletes work hard to be competitive plus maintain their study skills. He salutes all the young contestants and their efforts and good luck. And may the best team prevail from South Union Township Supervisor Rick Vernon. And still one to nothing, Gary, as we work now into the top of the fourth. And due up for Greater Latrobe, 5-6-7 in the lineup. Eli Boring. Jacob Kramer and Tyler Vazico. Boring the right fielder. That's Fazikas, just so you have that. Fazika. Fazikas. Fazikas. Yes. I got you. Okay. Tyler Fazikas. The boring the right fielder. Single to right field yes, first he time did. up. And there's a high fly ball to right field. I'm sorry, left field. Coming in to make the catch that time Blaise is Krisner. Blaze Krisner. One pitch, one out. That's great for the Mustang pitcher, Patronus. You wonder how long they'll stick with Paxton today. You wonder if there's a you know, pitch number that they're going to get to that might be under 104 with it being so early on in the season. And kind of a spot start for him as well with 
Kravosky ailing a little bit here today. I'm sure that Brad Yeoman has a plan. Left hand fastball in there for a strike to Jacob Kramer. Flew out to center field, his first at bat in the second inning. Field a little soft here, but very well cut. It's probably the best the surface maybe has looked here ever. Was rehabbed in the fall, and there's a high fly ball in the infield. Going back is the shortstop to make the catch that's, for the Mustang. That's Frank Kula, and that's going to be three pitches and two outs. Now you have Tyler Fazekas coming to the plate. Fazekas coming up. He uh, was on on an air in the second inning. Stranded there with two strikeouts to follow him. Zika's batting 400 here in the early part of the season as the designated hitter. Mustang swing around to left field a little bit for Fasikas. What a difference, though, from yesterday, Gary. A 13-5 game yesterday, and here we are one to nothing in the top of the fourth. Difference pitching will make. That pitch is in there for a strike. So... Patronus working well here in the fourth. Frank, did we have some wind blowing out yesterday in Latrobe? No. It's a lot of bat on balls. There's a swing and a miss for strike two, so way ahead in the count now. Patronus trying to finish an inning with under 10 pitches. Yep. This will certainly change the plan for Brad Yeoman if he's able to get this one, two, three, and there's a ground ball to second. Up with it, and on to first for the out is Hoff to O'Brien. So quick inning for Patronus, one, two, three, under 10 pitches, and the Mustangs will come to bat here in the bottom of the fourth, still trailing one to nothing here on WMBS Facebook Live. Yep, the CR Parana Group High School Sports Night, and quality care doesn't have to be hard to find. NovaCare Rehabilitation has locations in Uniontown and Masontown and is accessible for all of your recovery needs. Same-day appointments and no referrals needed means making an appointment is an easy process. Industry-leading treatments, including LVST, big therapy for Parkinson's disease, which increases mobility, improves balance, and decreases time necessary to complete tasks. Don't miss the opportunity to personalize your care with NovaCare. And MNR Transit, locally owned and operated by the Scott family, has been helping students travel safely to school in Fayette County for more than three years. MNR Transit is a proud supporter of Laurel Highlands Mustang Baseball and wishes all of the area teams the best of luck. For more information, you can phone 724-439-3164. That's 724-439-3164. Stop into their office on South Mount Vernon Avenue in Uniontown, right down the street from WMBS, Gary. Leading off for the Mustangs, Shane Layton to be followed by Blaze Krisner and Parker Hoff here in the Mustang half of the fourth inning. Trying to get something started again. Still on the mound now for Greater Latrobe, Logan Bradish. Beautiful sunshiny day as Bradish delivers high and inside for ball one. And he had Uniontown with a 6-2 win yesterday over Albert Gallatin. Bell Vernon doubled up Ringgold at 2-1. That game went nine innings. Fastball at the knees, fouled back there by Layton. Connellsville doubled up Trinity yesterday, 8-4. Waynesburg lost to, or actually Waynesburg defeated Brownsville 7-2. And a score correction on what you might have seen posted or heard earlier on today. Frazier actually down Bentworth 5-2. There's a... Pop-up foul side down the right side out of play. That will run the count to one ball and two strikes. Most of those schools are playing each other again today in a back-to-back -back series. How do you like these back-to-back -back well, games, Gary? They started that last yep. year with the WPI. I'm not a big fan of that. Foul back again by Layton. Just uh, I think that um, it really eliminates some of the Pitching um, strategies, you have to throw pitchers less innings. And um, I don't know, it just the way you uh, develop throughout the season may allow you to be able to avenge an early loss Correct. to one of the teams later in the season. Whereas if you're playing them back-to-back, -back, it's almost like a repeat 
instant replay of the previous game. I think the reason they put it in, they don't want the same team to be able to use the same pitcher twice against the same opponent. I think that was their mindset when the whole process was put in. Swing and a miss for strike three. So down on strike swinging is Layton for the first out here in the bottom of the fourth. So Blaze Krisner will step in. In a way, though, you know, in past seasons, if you would schedule right, you could actually use your number one guy in maybe, let's say, seven out of ten games. You get a couple of rainouts and stuff gets you know placed the right way for you. Now, no matter what, the most you're going to get out of your number one if you're playing ten conference games is five games. Which I don't agree with. You have a number one, should be able to take advantage of. Yep. Foul back for the second strike to Blaze Krisner. First one was in for a strike, swinging. Second one also, so 0-2 now to Blaze Krisner with one out here in the inning. You go battle with the steering committee in the offseason. <laughs> There's a foul back again, so hanging in there is Krisner, but still with an 0-2 count. I hope this nice weather that we're seeing today continues throughout the course of the season for sure. Yeah, calling for some rain tomorrow, but no game on the schedule, so that's good. Oh, inside. Little chin music there as Krisner had to duck out of the way. First ball to Krisner, one and two. Plays an integral part of the Mustang basketball team this year. Just outside for ball two. Tried to get him to chase on the outside edge. What a fun last four seasons that's been. For sure. 2-2 pitch, just misses again outside, and that's going to run the count full after Krisner was 0-2, battling in there to get a 3-2 count. Here comes a pitch. Strike three called on the outside corner. Krisner thought it was outside, but called strike three. So, again, Mustangs. Going down by the way of strikeout, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times already. We're only in the fourth inning. Parker Hoff will step in. He struck out in the second. Looks at ball one. Maybe in between innings, Gary, we can get a pitch count update on both Bradish and Patronus, kind of see where we're at at this juncture of the sure. game. Sure. Good cut there by Hoff. Going straight fastballs now is Logan Bradish, and why not? Mustangs unable to put it in play so far this inning. And no hits so far for the Mustangs. No, one, I'm sorry, one hit. Frank yeah, Cola, double, Frank Cola yeah. in his first inning. Swing again for strike two. So one ball, two strikes now to Parker Hoff. Two yeah. outs here in the inning. Yesterday was actually their high output for runs in a game at five. There's a foul back, straight back over the backstop, so still one ball and two strikes. You want to see those bats getting going a little more than maybe they have been here, at least to start the season. Yeah, you would think they would be loosened up after yeah. the Florida trip. Saw the Pirates unleash some bats yesterday. They didn't know the way that was going to turn out that way, the way that game started. Ground ball between short and third. Running but unable to make the play at shortstop there was... That was Cooper Bassiano. At short, yes, Cooper Bassiano. Thanks for that help as Parker Hoff beats out an infield single. Brings up C.J. Gesk. Struck out in the first, on on an air in the second. So that will require Bradish to throw a few more pitches here in the fourth inning. Hoff, good lead off here at first. And time called. It's nice when you get a little production out of the bottom of your lineup as well and kind of set yourself back up now for the top of the order. And C.J. Guest, Mustangs coming through the lineup now for the third time in this game. Off with a big lead, and C.J. takes a ball outside. So 1-0 to C.J. Trying to keep things moving here for the Mustangs in the fourth. Now a huge lead by Hoff over here at first. 
Good three steps off. He's going to have to dive back and got they called got out. Wow. That's not a good call from our vantage point, but he's called out with the umpire behind the pitcher's mound. He's kind of screened, and it was close enough that the call was made. He's, he's called out. Brad wants a little conversation here. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to. Brad, very unhappy. Uh, and good the reason. Over first. <laughs> we had a very good look <laughs> at it. And uh, we're not going to criticize the umpire. Nope. Though. So it's one to nothing. Heading now to the but top of the fifth now, Gary. I'll let you Absolutely. know that your health is the most important thing to you. And it's important to find the best physical therapy clinic to serve your needs. Movement Physiotherapy is now located on Route 40 on Pedro Drive, west of Uniontown. They understand this, want to help ease your stress. Tyler Gasek has over 10 years' experience helping people improve their health with physical therapy and is ready to help you. You can give them a call at 724-912-PTPT or visit Movement Physiotherapy online at movementpp.com. Uniontown Detailing offers an all-inclusive auto care experience. Services include full auto detailing, professional ceramic coating, window tinting, undercoating, paintless dent repair, and more. They are conveniently located at... 255 South Mount Vernon Avenue in Uniontown, and best of luck to all of our local teams from Uniontown Detail. So due up for Greater Latrobe, Riley Smith, Dante Bassiano, and going to the top of the lineup, Eric Batista will be the third at bat. And uh, base running miscues have been a little bit of a problem for the Mustangs here, eliminating opportunities for their bats to drive in any runs, but it's still one to nothing. There's a strike to Smith. Struck out looking in the second. Didn't get an opportunity to uh, get that pitch count, but we'll try to do that between innings here. A little bit outside on the breaking pitch there by Patronus, one and one. A little bit of a close call and a little controversy there, Gary. Didn't allow us to Get the numbers down below. Absolutely, but uh, Mustangs need to get the bats going. Patronus, a little low and inside, so two balls in a strike. Patronus looking for that call at the knees, didn't get it. He's going to step back and regroup. Not sure what the delay is here. He's getting a you – no, know, they don't have anybody – to protecting the catcher down in the bullpen, which is a no-no. And the umpire wants to make sure that there's somebody down there before the next pitch is delivered. Patronus with the windup outside and high, three and one now. She four conferences this year, Gary, in 4A. She'll have at least 16 Playoff teams this season and four qualifiers into the state playoffs. Last year, 4A got only three. There's a drive in between short and third. Picked up there. Nicely played by Sankovic. And he goes in front of Kula to make that grab as he should. Strong, that was a heck of a snap. Absolutely. Kind of strong. Put the glove down and yeah, kind of picked it up like a pick. Strong armed it over to O'Brien for the nice 5 to 3 put out. Yeah, three and one pitch that uh, could have got a man on with nobody out. So with one out, Dante Bassiano swing and a miss. That off-speed offering there by Patronus had him way out in front. What's been interesting, Gary, you go back over the last couple of seasons, you go back maybe two or three years ago, Joe Chambers was probably – the three pitcher coming into the lineup ended up earning the number two spot. Last year it was Kravoski that was maybe three or four deep on the Mustang pitching staff ended up earning the number two spot. And here we are this year, Patronus not expected to be among the Mustangs' top two pitchers to start the season, but comes through pitching a game like today. He might find himself as a regular in the Mustang rotation this season as well. Certainly looks like he knows what he's doing as strike two at the knees. So one ball and two strikes. Second pitch was low and outside. So now one and two. Patronus in control here with one out. 
Great on the trobe on top, one to nothing here in the top half of the fifth inning. Strike three called, and uh, that was looking at really no chance that time for Bassiano to take a cut at that one as a slow curveball right at the knees on the inside part of the plate. You get these opportunities to prove yourself, and it's good to see these kids coming out there and knowing what's kind of on the table and taking advantage of it. It would be nice to see if the bats can come around a little bit here, Gary, and kind of reward Patronus for the job that he's done on the mound for Laurel Highlands here today. Lead-off hitter Eric Batista now stepping in for Latrobe. Singled in the first, struck out looking in the third. Looks at strike one on the outside part of the plate. They're starting their third track through the lineup as well. Patronus gets a signal. Deep breath. There's a drive foul down the third base side. Count. In Patronus's favor now, 0-2. And, and again, could be another inning where Patronus throws very few pitches. Get this one under 15, I think. If you can get this out here. Especially as well as he's pitched, you can keep him under 100. And if he's feeling good out there, why not continue to roll with him? 0-2 pitch, see if he wastes one or goes right at him. And through the slow curve, and that was pulled way foul up into the fans on the left field side. Fan out there tried to one-hand it, give him an error. <laughs> and the Mustangs have committed two so far today. Greater Latrobe just one. Still 0-2, and there's a... Line drive right at Kula, and he snags it for the out. So hard hit ball, but nonetheless an out. Line drive to Frank Kula. One, two, three inning again for Latrobe. We'll bring the Mustangs to bat in the bottom of the fifth, trailing one to nothing. Of course, on the C.R. Barana Group High School Sports Day, bad hair day, Gary. Bad day at the office. Pretty much Bad both. day behind the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stuff happens even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance that stays put until you need to change a car, driver, your address, plus seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township, the Sprouse Insurance Group. Give them a call at 724-437-9812 or go to SprouseInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock is not guaranteed continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. Our game coverage also brought to you by the C. Harper Auto Group, the best price every time, all the time. Gary, you know a lot about the C. Harper Auto Group. Absolutely, and they're good guys down there with uh, Casey Harper, Casey Jr., David Marcatello, all our friends down at C. Harper will give you the best price every time, all the time. Another place you know a lot about of? Davis and Davis. Since 1976, Davis and Davis has represented people, not insurance companies. Their lawyers have experience in litigating or settling personal injury claims, medical malpractice cases, and wrongful death actions together with domestic real estate, workers' compensation, and municipal law experience. For more information on how Davis and Davis could help you, phone 724-437-2799. That's 724-437-2799. So C.J. Guess was at the plate on the pickoff at first base as the inning ended in the fourth, so he'll come back in with a new count and still facing Logan Bradish here in the bottom half of the fifth. I think he's going to have to be getting very close. We never got that pitch count, did we? Be, no, we did not, but I, I believe. Oh, I can actually run down and get it for you real quick, Gary, if you want. Gask now led off the third with getting on on an air. Looks at ball one. Stole second. Walk to Kula put runners at first and second. Guest took off for third and was cut down stealing. The Mustangs ended up stranding the bases loaded in that inning. And that's for a strike, so one and one on the outside part of the plate. CJ looking to get things started here in the fifth. There's a little looper over first base and could fall for a problem, but no, running in and making the catch. The right fielder. Tony Masari 
makes a running catch down the right field side, right inside the line. It was a fair ball catch, but unable to start things was C.J. Guest brings up Frank Kula. Thought that one really had a chance to drop in, but a nice play out there by the right fielder for Latrobe. I'm sorry, I gave that catch to the first baseman, and actually that was Eli Boring who made the catch out there in right field. Next pitch will be number 84 for Bradish. So that was strike one to Frank Kula stepping in here now. Patronus is at 80. So no, guys both getting very close, yes. This pitch 84 right here. In the dirt for ball one. One and one to Frank Kula. like to see him get into one here to tie things up. Certainly has the power. We've seen it several times over the last couple of years. That one's in the dirt also. They're kind of pitching around Frank a little bit. Double in the first. Walked on four pitches in the third. Now two and one to Frank here in the fifth. They hit a home run against him yesterday, wouldn't you? That's high and outside, ball three. So, But that's adding to the pitch count for yep. Bradish. You're kind of six one, half dozen the other, but you're still one. You're sitting on a one to nothing lead. Don't want to take any chances. 3-1 pitch. Ball out. Oh, called strike as Frank was heading down to first. Wow. So runs the count full. Hard to see from our vantage point, but umpire certainly had it as a strike. 3-2 pitch. That's inside ball four, so just one pitch later. Gets the walk again for Frank Kula's third time on base and three at-bats for Frank Kula. I can sense an opportunity here, Gary. you got a runner on base. You're starting to wear Bradish down a little bit now. Pitch count approaching 90. Well, that probably is right at 89. Big lead for Frank. He has the speed over here at first. There's a little drive into right field, and that's going into right field, and they're going to try to send him to third. He's going to, he's going to slide in safely, and that's going to allow Sankovic to get into second base also. So probably not the right play there by the right fielder, Eli Boring, to try to throw the ball to third base and allowed Sankovic to scoot into seconds, and now second and third with just one out. Is that now, Gary? Four or five innings, they've had guys in scoring position. Exactly. So, Kula with the speed, no doubt, gets down to third. And the throw into third allows Sankovic to scoot into second now with just one out. Try to get anything in play out of the infield by O'Brien would at least tie it up. Latrobe brings the Infield in at third and first. You have to take advantage of this opportunity. Double play depth at short and second. So coaching staff for Latrobe again will come out and explain things to his infield who all come into the mound. Think they'll make a move here? Well, that's his uh, second visit to the mound in the game, but not in the inning. inning correct, yep. He's not he's not going out. No one's appears to be coming in to relieve Bradish, so they're gonna stick with him here and ride him out, approaching, get a hundred pitches sitting right around ninety right now. They might be thinking about free pass to O'Brien to make the force out at double play ball. That's might be the strategy for Latrobe in this situation, but I think O'Brien came into the game with a 364 average as well, Gary. He did. Doesn't look like they're going for the free pass. First pitch. Whoa, low and in the dirt. Did not get away from the catcher, but there's very little room behind home plate here at Mustang Field, Tom Landman Stadium, as we like to call it. So one ball, he may be just going to try to pitch around O'Brien a little bit, make him hit something that he doesn't like. That's outside, ball two. They haven't named the press box for anybody yet, have they? 
That's the Brian Rose. <laughs> no, <okay>. no. <laughs> That's, I haven't died yet. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, plus, there's a lot more. Neither did did Tom Lamb. Yes. I mean, he's gonna, That's he's not gonna right. like that. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't thinking of that. I, I, but there's also a lot more people more deserving as well. I mean, you got uh, Barry Rosner, now, John Gazarek, Jerry Dupay. So with two and zero count, they gave him the free yeah. pass as we thought they might. So they weren't going to pitch to him to begin with. So I'm not sure why they bothered with the first two pitches. See if he. Uh, chased a uh, bad pitch that would be the only reason so the bases are loaded now for Vecchiola Tristan McCoy oh. gonna pinch it oh okay pinch runner for O'Brien gonna put more speed on the bags for the Mustangs that's number 25 Connor D'Amico we've seen him in this situation last year so McCoy, pinch hitting Gary, enters the game 0 for 6 on the season. Seven plate appearances. So we got Kula at third, Sankovic at second, and now D'Amico at first in the pinch running roll. McCoy to a pinch hit for Vecchiola. And this will be a re-entry situation, not a situation where Vecchiola will be out of the game. So Bradish now, see what he does, if he's going to work from the stretch or the windup with the bases loaded. Got to watch for a line drive with the infield all the way up, short sec second, third, and first. Just need to get something through the infield at this point if you're McCoy. But you also don't want to swing at any bad pitches with Bradish having a little bit of control problems. Watch for the line drive. Don't get doubled off. That's outside for ball one. If you can find a way, Gary, to get a win here today, I mean, I think it would be extremely productive for the Mustangs this season. Latrobe, one of the favorites. You didn't throw your ace in this opening series. You can find a way to get a split. Be a huge confidence builder I for agree. the Mustangs also. 1-0 offering with the bases loaded. Swing and a miss. That ball at letter height. McCoy could not make contact. You hope this trend we saw from the basketball season with Uniontown and Laurel Highlands having so much success continues into the spring as well. Love to see it. 1-1 one, one offering from the stretch. That's outside 2-1. and one. See what we Mustangs can. They've already left three, six, seven runners on base yeah. in the fifth inning. 2-1 pitch. Foul back. Good cut there by McCoy, but could not put it in play. 2-2. Two and two. It's very rare. You go four or five innings with guys in scoring position, and you still don't have a run across. Absolutely. you got to take advantage. Clutch hitting is huge in high school baseball, as in all levels. 2-2. Two, two. Base is loaded. Bradish steps back and... Brad Yeoman's going to call timeout. I think he's going to want to. I'm not sure what he's asking for. He doesn't have to grant it. He usually get it one again. Now he gives it to him. Umpire. I came back over there and said something to Brad, too, but now he's going to allow Brad to have the talk here. Yep. With Tristan McCoy. Coming out to talk to his pitcher. And McCoy had some nice at-bats here. You go back to last year in that playoff run, very productive and actually came in in some similar situations and had big hits for the Mustangs. So we're looking for that to be a repeat of those appearances here with a 2-2 count, one out, bases loaded. Bradish from the stretch for Greater Latrobe. Rocks and deals, fouls it back. Stays alive. Yep. That's all it is at this point. And at this uh, venture also, the outfield is very deep for Latrobe. So anything in the outfield will certainly score a run. We just need to get it in play here somehow. McCoy facing Bradish. That's in the dirt for ball three. Good stop there by Amatucci. And yeah, no wiggle room now. That saved a run because that, that was going up the first pace line. Two 
You still have Patronus on the other side, Gary, with 20 pitches to work with. 3-2 count. Bases loaded. Mustangs trailing one to nothing. Here's the pitch. High and inside. Walks a run wow. in to tie the game. So Bradish, coaching staff for Latrobe, choosing to go with him throughout, and that's going to be the third walk of the inning. Actually, uh, an intentional walk, but still third walk, and that's going to bring in Kula with the tying run, and Kavanaugh's going to come to the plate in the same situation with one out, and bases loaded, and it looks like they're going to be a pitching change here for Greater Latrobe. And we're going to step aside here for a few messages from our sponsors on the C. Harper Auto Group Sports Night here on WMBS Facebook Live. Of course, Jimmy John's, a place to stop. Walnut Hill Plaza in Uniontown, proud supporter of local high school sports. You can stop by Jimmy John's, Walnut Hill Plaza by shop and save to fuel up before or after the game. UPMC Center's free app services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community. They treat sports injuries, neurological conditions, back sprains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and all other conditions. You can give them a call at 724-437-7500. Of course, switching is easy. We do it all the time. We switch on the lights. We switch TV channels. Some of us switch partners while square yes. dancing. Well, that's a stretch. Well, it's not a stretch. You can switch and save with State Farm. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman right here in Uniontown can switch you over. She can start saving today when you want the real deal like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. Give Lauren Yeoman a call in Uniontown. Who's our new Greater Latrobe pitcher, Gary? It's number 10, Dominic Cararini. Get you some stats on him as well. He's a senior. Looks like he's been a veteran for the Greater Latrobe Wildcats coming in in a very tight situation now with the bases loaded, just one out. The Mustangs with the tying run scoring on the walk. Well, for Cararini, Gary, this will be his third appearance already in, on the season. Enters with a 1-0 record and one save. Has worked four and a third innings, given up four runs. Two of them, though, earned, has struck out 10 and walked three so far this season. So the Mustangs with just one hit in the inning. Sankovic with that grounder between second and first, put runners at second and third on the throw to third, followed by an intentional walk to O'Brien. D'Amico on to run for him. And McCoy coming in to pinch hit for Vecchiola. Works the count to three and two. Takes ball four. Mustangs have it tied. So it seems like you mentioned Cararini has seen a lot of action here early on in the season. Probably their top closer, but he's been tagged a little bit this season. So he's probably going to be a finesse type pitcher doesn't his warm-ups didn't look like he was excessive speed on the radar gun he's a senior though he's been around the block exactly so he knows what he's doing another pitcher down the the uh line that's luke nipper working his arm so that's a left-hander that they can go to if need be nipper a sophomore so it looks like I don't know. Latrobe's going to bring the infield up again, at least at second. I'm sorry, at first and third. These are fun games to watch, though. Low scoring, pitchers duel, well played on both sides. Both teams have had their fair share of opportunities, and now we're working here, bottom half of the fifth. Again, we only play seven, tied at one, and Patrick Cavanaugh coming to the plate. Struck out in the second, flew out the right in the third. Be another good opportunity for him to put it into the outfield here. First pitch, low and inside for ball one from Dominic Cararini. Lauren Yeoman, State Farm Agency, watching this game as well. Strike on the outside corner. Looked a little bit low to the tall Patrick Cavanaugh, but Cararini getting the call there. One and one. One out, bases loaded, score tied now at one. There's a foul ball off the dugout on the third base side. So that'll be a one ball, two strike count to Patrick Cavanaugh. Right, 
175 pounds, senior, coming in batting 400 also. So Carini trying to get the second out in the inning. Mustangs trying to add to their run total with the tying run across already this inning. Swing and a miss. Strike three to Patrick Cavanaugh. Big cut with two strikes. Like to see some of the Mustangs shorten up those swings a little bit to get it in play. That'll bring up Shane Layton. Hit by a pitch in the second. Struck out in the fourth. So a huge strike out there by Carini. Now allows the infield to go back. That's strike on the outside corner again. Carini getting those low calls here. Layton looking to try to have a little bit of a two-out lightning. Ground ball to second. Flip to short, and that'll do it. The Mustangs leave three on again, but do tie the game at one. We're going to go to the top half of the sixth inning, all tied at one here on WMBS Facebook Live. See Harper Sports Night. Mamaruka's Pizza Shop located at 64 Barton Mill Road in Uniontown, your prime place to enjoy Local high school sports, Mama Ruka's family owned and operated with pride of ownership. Certainly shows the Samson family carries on the tradition with homemade pizzas, salads, subs, and wings. Mama Ruka's open Monday through Saturday, 4 to 10 for indoor and outdoor dining and takeout. Phone 724-438-9066 or visit mamarukaspizza.com for their menu. Looking for the highest quality products for lower prices? Shop and save in Uniontown has the widest selection of brands and the freshest offerings around. They specialize in your family's grocery needs. Take advantage and sign up for the Shop and Save Perks card to get money-saving benefits and discounts on gas. Shop and Save located Walnut Hill Plaza open every day, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Come on down and get your shopping on at Shop and Save in Uniontown. Our game coverage also brought to you by the Radcliffe Law Firm at 648 Morgantown Road in Uniontown. Proud supporters of local high school sports, the Radcliffe Law Firm. And Gary, one other score to pass along to Uniontown trying to improve to 2-0 on the season. They lead Albert Gallatin, bottom of the fourth inning. Red Raiders up by a score of 3-1. And also the Bell Vernon Leopards taking on the Ringgold Rams. I want to confirm this score um, before I pass it along. So send it back to you, Gary. Okay, here for the top half of the sixth inning, Second batter in the order, Louis Amatucci, the catcher for Greater Latrobe to face Patronus here in the sixth. There's a looper in the left field, and that's going to fall for a base hit. So Patronus coming with the breaking ball and jumping right on that was Amatucci to lead things off here in the sixth for Greater Latrobe. That was pitch 81 for Patronus and the Mustangs. Just mustered one run out of that situation where they had the bases loaded with one out in the bottom of the fifth inning. I think they would have liked to have gotten a little more than that, Gary. Well, we've seen that numerous times now. Two men left on in the first, one in the second, three in the third, one in the fourth, three in the fifth. Not what you like no. to see. And we play seven scheduled innings. But if we're still tied after seven, we'll play until... This one's decided. Patronus, left-hand pitch, just a little bit high. So 1-0 to Logan Bradish. So Bradish stayed in the game. I'm not quite sure where he went in the lineup or where he went in the defense. We'll have to pick that up. At the knees for a strike, one and one. Nice pitch there by Patronus. Good location. Just where he wanted that one. Gary Frankhauser's doing the play-by-play. -play. And Brian Morosak, Matt Sapiens behind the camera. Frank Kula helping us out with our scoreboard today. Semi-large lead throw over now. Back in standing up is Amatucci. A little excitement over in the Latrobe dugout trying to. They got Ward get early on moved. in the game. Being a little too chirpy down there. Patronus just a little outside to Bradish. 
two balls and a strike. Nobody out here in the top half of the sixth inning. We're tied at one. So look down here to see if there's someone warming for Laurel. Noah Lyon pitching down there. High and inside, ball three. So, yep, Noah Lyons is down the first baseline, warming up. Right-hander. Don't want to give these Wildcats life here in the sixth inning. Here's the pitch. Ball four. Wow, looked good from our angle at the letters, but not from the umpire's perspective. And it's now two men on, nobody out. The Wildcats have a little life. Tony Masari, first baseman, will come to the plate with nobody out and two men on. And you might see a pitching change here. Again, Patronus has done such a nice job for the Mustangs today holding this greater Latrobe team that scored 13 against the Mustangs yesterday. Only one run as we work here in the top of the sixth. Looks like he hasn't reached the end of the road at least quite yet, Gary. They're going to keep him out there for at least one more. Look for the bunt opportunity here if you're Latrobe. Or maybe not. Now Brad Yeoman will come to the mound at least to try to set up the defense, but you might also see the pitching change, and I think that's going to be the case as Brad kind of looked at uh, Patronus and said, I think we need to make a change, and I think the umpires are going to break this up and make the change. So coming in was not the man that was warming up. Yeah, it's Noah Lyon. Is that Noah Lyon? Yep. Yes, it is. Okay. Freshman. You talk about young guys getting an opportunity. Noah Lyon will be coming on in relief. Here for the Mustangs. This game tied at one. Latrobe threatening here in the top of the sixth on the CR Parada Group High School Sports Day. When your car is damaged, a name to remember is Ted Sova and Son Body and Fender Repair. Expanded to serve you, Ted Sova and Son offers complete collision service, minor to major repairs, frame unibody repair, and glass installation. They will gladly provide estimates, and they will work with your insurance company. Family owned and operated for 48 years. Call 724-437-437. 2351 for Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair. Proud to support Laurel Highlands Mustang Baseball. Good times, good food. It's all at Potter's Bar and Grill, Morgantown Street in Uniontown. Family owned and operated. Potter's has been a staple in the Uniontown community since 1950. Get out of the house and make your next night out at Potter's Bar and Grill, Morgantown Street in Uniontown. Call 724 438 9835 or visit Potter's on Facebook, and we will see you at Potter's. So the uh, lineup changes for the Mustang. Patronus will go out into left field, and Blaze Krisner will come out. Um, we'll have to see how they work the batting lineup with that switch of left fielders as coming on to pitch for the Mustangs. The freshman, they don't make any other changes in the infield with uh, Hoff at second. Kula at short, Sankovic at first, and O'Brien at first base. Just the second appearance of the season for Noah Lyon. Worked one inning, gave up one hit, one run. It was earned. Uh, did not strike anybody out in that inning and walked one and has a 7.00 ERA. And this is certainly a bunt situation for the Latrobe Wildcats, even though their fourth batter, cleanup hitter, is at the plate. I would think that's not even a concern. You would have Sankovic and O'Brien up on the grass. You might have the play with Lyon responsibility for the third base line to allow Sankovic to stay at third with the opportunity for a force out there. And that looks like what the Mustang defense is going to look like with Sankovic even with the bag at third base. A line giving the go-ahead here. Thumbs up from Sevi Vecchiola, the catcher. Unique situation now for the Mustang defense to try to 
Straying some runners for the Latrobe Wildcats, much the same as the Mustangs have been stranded throughout this entire game. O'Brien way in at first base. Outfield straight away and shallow. Now they're going to bring the infield in a little bit, but... Just O'Brien here at Brian first. At first. And he He's squares around. Away. There's the bunt. Has a play at third, but no, he's going to go to first. So a good sacrifice there by Masari. Bunt down the first baseline. Good fundamentals there by the Latrobe Wildcats to bunt it down the first baseline. Probably could have had a play at third, but takes the for sure out, and they're going to possibly walk boring here. He's hit the ball hard twice, and let's see what Brad Yeoman decides here with one out. Another big spot here for the freshman to come into the game, huh, Gary? It is, and now they are going to walk him, so that's going to put a premium on control for Lyon to face the left fielder, Jacob Kramer. These situations happen, especially, again, if you're just joining us, Devin Kravosky not available for the Mustangs either yesterday or today with a little arm tightness. So the Mustangs having to go a little deeper in their rotation. First pitch is in there for, I'm sorry, outside, ball one. Line working from the stretch. Everybody in. Try to get that force at home. That's hit batsman wow. will push the run across. That looked like it hit the bat. And he also looked like he lifted his arm right into the pitch. But don't see much argument though on the Laurel Highland side. O'Brien did mention that to the umpire that he kind of threw his arm into it. The Mustang's not going to get that call and it's going to be a 2-1 lead now. So, Greater Latrobe over Laurel Highlands here in the top of the sixth. Just one hit in the inning. The leadoff single by Amatucci now comes around to score to make the score two to one, but still lots of trouble with just one out. Bases loaded, and the freshman in there pitching. The infield all the way up around. That's low and outside for ball one to Tyler Vazikis. Mustangs way in in the infield. Wow. Swing and a miss for strike one, one and one to Fasikas. Pretty dangerous, too, if he catches one. They're going to back up a little bit on the grass, but probably looking for that put out at home. Foul tip, strike. One and one now to Fasikas, trying to get the second out of the inning is Noah Lyons. Here's the pitch. Wow. Right back to the pitcher. On one on the first double play. Good scoop there by O'Brien at first base, and the Mustangs get out of a huge jam, but a double play from the pitcher, catcher to first, ends the inning, but... Greater Latrobe does get the run on the hit batsman and takes the lead 2-1 to one to the bottom of the sixth here on WMBS, the C. Harper Auto Group Sports Night. It really couldn't have worked out any better for the Mustangs, but they still trail by 1-2-1 one, to one and going to the bottom of the sixth. Get the family care that's right for you with WVU Medicine, Uniontown Hospital Primary Care. Uniontown Hospital provides not only emergency medical aid, they also offer a variety of primary care options and locations to meet your needs. And you could contact Uniontown Hospital Primary Care, whether you're feeling under the weather or coming in for an annual checkup. The WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Primary Care is ready to take care of all your routine medical needs. Please visit UniontownHospital.com for available locations and contact information. Our game coverage also being brought to you by Melinda Delarose, candidate for judge of the Fayette County Court of Common Pleas, an assistant district attorney, tough prosecutor, and trusted local attorney. Melinda Delarose is asking for your vote for judge. And the Catholic War Veterans Post 
1669 in Hopwood, a proud supporter of local high school sports. In fact, their annual charity golf outing has contributed dozens of scholarships to Fayette County students. The Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hopwood. So now the Mustangs, Gary, have to get the bats going here, down 2-1, to one, heading to the bottom of the sixth. And looks like Noah Lyons going to be batting. He's, he's going to bat for Blaze Krisner, who came out of the game as Petronas went out to left field. So Noah Lyon will not only come into pitch as a freshman, but he's going to be at the plate to face Dominic Carrarini here in the bottom half of the six with the Mustangs trailing two to one. And Lyon just one plate appearance so far on the season. Looks like it was a sacrifice. Looks like they're looking for a potential bun up at third base. Has good speed. Smith in on the grass. First pitch, low and outside for ball one. Pitch that possibly had been called as a strike previously. 1-0 pitch. There's a shot down to third and gets by. So that infield in pays dividends for Noah Lyon as he uh, – Rips it down the third base line, unable to make the grab to his backhand side was Smith down there at third and a leadoff single for Lyon. This is the kid. You can just tell, Gary, he's going to have a bright future here at Laurel Highland. He'll go back to the fall. He was up on the depth chart on the football team. Just a terrific overall athlete and comes through with a big hit here. But the Mustangs will run for him now as Devin Kravoski, again, had some of that arm tightness. This is going to be a courtesy runner actually be a pinch runner that would be a courtesy, a courtesy runner, runner. he's courtesy a pitcher runner. yeah courtesy runner here for a line and that's gonna bring to the plate parker hoff and might be a bunt situation for the mustangs but looks like yanoski might be print pinch hitting and yanoski so far this season just one of 10 at the plate wearing number 19 I might be squaring around a bunt in this situation as well as the Mustangs. Might play a little small ball here trying to get that run back as they trail 2-1 to one as we work bottom of the sixth inning. I'm sure Coach Yeoman knows who his best bunters are and might think Yanoski's one of those, but uh, it's a big body up there. He could put some power behind one, but again, small ball seems to be the opportunity at this point for the Mustangs to get a runner in scoring position. Really could have asked for a better game to kick off our high school baseball covers this season. Tight 2-1. to one. Heading here into the final couple of innings. Big lead over here at first. Kravoski has some speed. That's inside. Oh, strike taken as he squared around a bunt but caught the inside corner. It's good to see, though, the Mustangs using Kravoski to run. At least you know that. Arm injury, probably not too serious, Gary, because if they were that concerned about it, I don't think he'd be out there on the base paths right now. You're right about that. So let's see what Yanoski can do. Does, and now he squares, and that's going to be foul back. So two strikes kind of eliminates the bunt now. Yeah, has to swing around. He might try to make him bunt again, but we'll see what Coach Yeoman does with that's a really 2 count. Dice, yeah. yeah. Gonna, he's going to call for the bunt again as we're trying to read the signals. No, he's swinging away, and there's a pop foul to the right side out of play. So swinging away now is Janoski with those two strikes. I like the swing away better than laying down a potential foul ball bunt here for strike three. That arm injury, you got to believe that uh, – Kravoski's not going to be running either, though. There's a little looper again over our head to the right side. Just can't barrel it up at this point. Well, why put him out there, though, if, he's, if you're not going to take a chance with him? Well, I mean, you had, your whole, you had your whole dugout as far as available guys. You're right about that, but I'm not sure he's a threat to steal. Yeah. I'm not. He's probably a heady guy. I mean, he's not somebody I think you're going to see get picked off out there. We talked about those courtesy runner situations in the past. High and inside, reaching up and grabbing that one was Amatucci. Almost got away from him. So now one ball and two strikes. Lead-off single by Noah Lyon has the Mustangs in business. And there's a high fly ball to center field. 
And that's going to be an easy catch, but a nice drive there by Janoski. But the first out of the inning is a fly ball to center fielder. That's Batista. Eric out there. Batista. Yes. Now you got the top of the order. Still an opportunity to make a little hay here in the bottom of the sixth. CJ Guest coming to the plate. 0 for 3 on, on an error in the third. Flew out the right field on a nice running catch by Eli. Boring out there in right field. Now he squares around a bunt. Pulls back. Throw to first, and he's back in safely. Diving in is Kravoski. Got a little slow there. Similar play yeah. to the pickoff that we saw earlier. Ball one was the pitch. So it's 1-0 and oh to C.J. Gask. Here's a pitch. Liner up the middle. It, that could oh, be a wow. double play, but no. Nice play there by second baseman. Dante Bastiano. Yeah, that's, I got to make sure I have the right Bastiano. Yeah, that's right. That's Dante Bastiano. <laughs> he made a nice backhand play, touches second, but no chance for, to double up C.J. Guest coming down the line. But now with two outs, Mustangs just with the runner on first. Frank Kula comes to the plate. We'd love a two-run home run right now, Gary. Sure would. Repeat that from yesterday. Go on top three to two. Facing Carrini, who came on in relief last inning. That is a slow curveball that catches the outside corner. For strike one. Gask on at first. Might see him take off. Strike two on the outside corner. Frank thought about it, but didn't offer it that pitch on the outside corner. So 0-2 now to Frank Kula. See if we can get one in the gap and maybe score some runs the hard way as opposed to leaving bases loaded. Ringgold knocked off Bell Vernon today. Wow, so that's, series that's a split. huge, yep. huge win there for Ringgold. The last check, Uniontown still up over Albert Gallatin. Runner going in the dirt, no chance there. CJ will get in standing. So now he's in scoring position with Frank Kula facing a one ball, two strike count. And he might pitch around him at this point. I don't know, but Mustangs need a clutch hit. I think we need a uh, pitch clock in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the mound now, Dominic Carrini. Getting a lead off at second is Gesk. I'm sorry, that's Kula. I'm sorry, it is Gesk. I was right the first time. Kula is at the plate with an opportunity here with a runner in scoring position. One, two count. Carini, slow roller to short, up with it, and oh, everybody say, oh, oh wow, nice play. Hey, hey, nobody there, nobody there, get there. All right, Frank Kula with a smart play to get down to second. Smart try there by Cooper. Bassiano, as he didn't think he would get Kula at first, faked the throw to first and threw to third, diving back in safely was Gesk. And as he did that, all of the infielders were in on the grass and Kula saw nobody covering second. So he scoots into second now with two runners in scoring position for Sankovic. Can't strand two more here, Gary. That's for sure. Ball outside, so we're going to give Kula an infield single on that slow roller. Definitely would have beat it out. And now two runners in scoring position. Deliberate, Dominic Carrini, 1-0 pitch, 2-0. Just a lot of off-speed offerings by Carrini. Mustangs need to barrel one up. 
line drive somewhere would be fantastic here for Sankovic, and he calls timeout as Carrini was taking an excessive amount of time on the mound. Sankovic needs to get his bat moving in that third spot. Here's a pitch. 3-0 and in the dirt. So Got first base open, though, and Sankovic a dangerous hitter. But behind him, you have O'Brien. I think just walked him anyway. So get the force out at any base here. And now facing Braden O'Brien. Flew out to center, hit by a pitch, and intentional walk to him in the fifth. With another opportunity, the Mustangs loaded him up. Might see another pitching change here, Gary. Well, they got a left-hander warming, and it's right-hand hitting O'Brien. I would think that might be against traditional fundamentals, but you never know. May have a situation here, though, with Cararini, you know, appearing to maybe be struggling a little bit. Teammates patting him on the back. You're trying to get a little more confidence and juice. So he's definitely staying, yeah, he's, he's staying in. He's definitely yeah. staying in. So trying to boost his confidence. The senior at, on the mound with uh, bases loaded, two men out. Bottom of the sixth inning, Mustangs trailing two to one. Running out of innings to try to push some of these runs across. Okay, now five of six innings, the Mustangs have had runners in scoring position here today. Come away with just one run. Take strike one. Ball with it. Could have taken a rip at there. O'Brien facing now. 0-1 offering. Here's the pitch. Strike two right at the knees. Wow. Came with the heat. And Carini showing a little bit of smoke now. Not the off-speed pitch. You're going to see it here, no doubt. Swing and a miss. Wow. Strike three. Wow. Just three confidence. Three pitches. pitch, three strikes. Strand three again. The Mustangs go to the seven, trailing two to one, having left two, three, six, seven, ten, thirteen men on base here so far for the Mustangs. We'll stop by Peachin's Pharmacy. They can help you with all of your prescription needs and still offer some COVID tests just in case you need them. Give them a call at 724-626-9600. That's 724-626-9600. Peachin's Pharmacy inside the downtown Connellsville Peachin Market. And if your car sounds like it's saying trade me in, trade me in, every time you start it up, we'll go to Ford of Uniontown and trade it in. That's right. Ford of Uniontown is ready to assist you with a new or pre-owned car, truck, or SUV purchase. They have all the deals, all the inventory, and they are ready to deal with you. So call or stop in your hometown Ford dealer, Ford of Uniontown, Route 40 across from Applebee. So listen to your car the next time you hear it say, trade me in. And you can also contact your local Allstate insurance agent, Russ Blayho, for a free quote on home or car insurance near you. Located on Lebanon Avenue in Uniontown, call Russ at 724-439-9700. Remember, you're in good hands with Russ Blayho and Allstate. So the Mustangs, Gary, just have not been able to take advantage of some of these opportunities here this afternoon. They've had the table set for them quite a few times. That's an understatement, Brian. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, going back to... Even little league, pony league days. When you get two strikes like that, you got to shorten up your swings. You got to get contact. Strikeout, obviously, nobody wants to strike out, but those conditions like that, you got to battle in there to uh, just put the ball in play somewhere, make a make a play. And the Mustangs have numerous strikeouts. Let's see if I can count them: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten strikeouts for the Mustangs here this afternoon. Reminder to stay tuned after the game for our post-game show. Being brought to you by South Union Township Supervisor Rick Vernon. We'll recap the game today and look forward to what's ahead on the conference slate next week. So Riley Smith, the third baseman, steps in for Gradle Latrobe, leading 2-1 to one here in the top of the sixth. Top, of, top the seven. of the seventh. Yeah, yeah. looking no line with the first pitch ball. Second pitch, high inside, ball two. Lyon led off the bottom of the six with a single, but didn't lead to anything for the Mustangs. Who the Mustangs have due up in the bottom of the seventh? Middle of the lineup, Vecchiola, Cavanaugh, and Layton. That looked like a 3-0 and pitch there. So now the Mustangs are going to come out, catcher Vecchiola and shortstop Kula to try to Give some encouragement to the freshman right-hander. 
Don't want to put runners on here in the top of the sixth and add to the needed runs for the Mustangs in the bottom of the seventh. There's a strike on the outside corner. Good pitch. Three and one. Three one pitch. Swing and foul. Ooh. Big cut there for a count of three and two. And scattered the greater Latrobe dugout a little bit, Gary, on that little hopper. Well, they need to be uh, on their toes over there. <laughs> They've been into the game, though, the entire way. 3-2 pitch on its way. Strike. Oh, wow. Late I had four. it called strike three, but it was called ball four. And it's hard to argue from our perspective. But um, coming up now is Dante Bassiano with nobody out and a runner on. You would think they're going to bunt again here. You want to try to keep this again within reach. Keep it at two to one. Give yourself a reasonable chance, especially in such a low-scoring game in the seventh inning, to get at least one back and extend this, if not get a walk-off. And they're going to have a courtesy runner coming out or a pinch runner coming out in the situation as well. And will be number eight, Mason Leonard, to run. Second time we've seen him out to run in this contest. So that, I think, would be a pinch runner to the for the third baseman. Yes. Big, huge lead over here at He first. did that last time, though, too, Gary, and stole a base. Throw over, back in, diving. He's quick and confident. Throw to first was on the home base side, so no real chance for a tag there. Lion with the pitch. There's a bunt, and it's a pop foul back. So that's a strike. Not allow for the runner to advance. You might see a bunt steal here with the speed at first. Going to be a hard opportunity with a good bunt to get this runner at second. With that lead, shoot, he's almost halfway to second. <laughs> Strike two, take on the bunt. Think at your age you'd be able to beat that out? Still, I know you got with that kind of lead. I think I could. How about Tony? Well, <laughs> he'd give it a shot. <laughs> Who got him? Oh, same play that did not get the call. Wow! Wow! We were right on that one too. We thought he was picked off. They're looking for an appeal. No appeal call. They're no. not going to allow it. Jeez. That was exactly the same play that got O'Brien picked off earlier in the game. Did not get the call for the Mustangs this time. It's kind of been that game. Runner stranded, not getting a lot of those tight calls here today. Just one of those afternoons for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs, unfortunately. Here's a pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. So huge out by way of strikeout for the Mustangs. That's just the first out. And that's going to bring up Eric Batista. Singled in the first, line drive in the fifth to Kula at shortstop. So he's hit the ball hard twice. And you might see the runner take off in this situation. Lyon with the pitch inside, almost catching him on the shirt, but ball one. Huge lead again. Line needs to throw over, and he does. It got him that time. No. I think he was back in that yeah, time. Yeah, he was back in that time. I'd like tag to go back was, and watch some of those close ones. Tag though, was high on the back that time, so definitely diving back in was good. Yeah, he hit him that time, so missed the first time. Hit by pitch now with two men on and one out. That's going to bring up Antonucci. Singled back in the fourth, came around to score that go-ahead run for Latrobe on the hit-by-pitch, man. So a lot of that happening here this afternoon, Brian. And trying to get a little confidence back here for Lyon, but it might be the end of the road for him. Infield coming in, Coach Yeoman. Not sure we had anybody warming. We didn't, so if we do have a change, it's going to be someone coming in from the field. Get our live video stream today, courtesy of State Farm Agent Lauren Yeoman and Movement Physiotherapy. Winning number four, four, see how this meeting goes, if we'll get a 
pitching change on the Laurel Highland side. Doesn't look like no, it. It looks like he's just giving some direction to Lyon on how to pitch here to Amatucci with two on and one out. Mustangs need a double play ball. Game's kind of dragging a little bit here, Gary, too, for two to one game. A lot We're of stopping. At, at two hours and 12 minutes into this one already. Hidden ball, hidden ball trick out there. So what do you think? Uh, I mentioned this earlier, Gary, before you were here. Batista, with the uh, oven mitt on his left hand, I think it's an injury situation there. Might be, although that's his glove hand. There's a fly ball to deep center field, making the catch and not tagging. Wow! I'm surprised that was a deep bags. drive yep. to center field, making the catch out there with C.J. Gask, but not tagging. Was a pinch runner at second base. Especially Leonard's speed. You would have thought he would have stayed Absolutely. on that bag and went. That ball was almost to the warning track here at Tom Lamon Field. I would have tested it. So two outs now. Mustangs try to hold this lead to a two-to-one situation. Logan Bradish, who start, started it on the mound for Latrobe, looks at a breaking pitch for strike one. And all these guys that have pitched today have done a great job. I mentioned Bradish getting the start. Carrini coming on in relief. And then Patronus and Lyon on the Laurel Highland side as well. Foul back. So 0-2 now to Bradish. Just a well-played high school baseball game. Certainly one that's fun to watch and hopefully a lot more like this throughout the rest of the spring. I'd like to see a little more clutch hitting. Oh, I agree. On the Mustang I mean, just, side. You know, hate to leave those guys stranded, but still well played as far as ex, you know, as far as setting yourself up for opportunities. Good pitch by Lyon there, trying to get a chase, a high and outside pitch to Bradish. That's going to be the story, Gary. The bats have to come alive. Your season high yesterday and runs scored was five so far this year. They didn't get get above four in a game down in Florida. Going to have to start getting more run production, especially in the high school game. Absolutely. One-two pitch, foul back. Runners taking off on the contact, so it's going to be tough on anything in the outfield to catch the runner at home. So Mustang outfield playing relatively shallow, but with the speed out there at second and the break on the bat, it's going to be difficult. Another foul back, so count remains one and two. Lions with the signal. From the stretch, just misses low and outside, two and two. Again, a, one that probably Bradish might have thought about taking a rip at, but Laid off. 2-2 two -two pitch. That's behind the backstop, behind the catcher, I'm sorry, to the backstop. Wild pitch allows the runners to advance and run the count to 3-2. and two. Now two runners in scoring position. But first base empty. Correct. But a 3-2 count, I'm not sure what you do here. You go after him? I think so. Lyon from the stretch. There's a pitch. Ooh, reaching out and barely getting a piece of that was Bradish. Just nipped it. And give him credit. So Brad Yeoman allowing Lyon to go after Bradish here with two outs. Two runners on second and third. And there's a high fly ball. Second baseman Hoff getting under it and makes a – Stumbling catch. Sun was tough, though. <laughs> that sun was coming down at a tough angle, even with the shades on. Not an easy catch for Hoff, but give him credit. Able to hang on in the top of the seven. So the Mustangs down to their final three out, still with a shot. Gary down two to one. Absolutely. And uh, try to get after Dominic Carini here in the bottom of the seventh, the Sea Harper Sports Night. 
here on WMBS Facebook Live. And be prepared for the spring with the help of First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County with a home improvement loan, home equity loan, or home equity line of credit. You can finally upgrade that old air conditioning unit, take care not, of that leaking just roof, say or replace that. those outdated floors. Apply online at ffgc.bank, First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County, member FDIC, equal housing lender, NMLS number 458. 729 UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community. They treat sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pains, sprains, and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. You can call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access, and they can contact a doctor for you. 724 437 7500 for UPMC's Centers for Rehab Services. And South Union Township Supervisor Rick Vernon knows there's nothing more exciting than high school sports. He knows all the athletes worked hard to be competitive plus maintain their study skills. He salutes all the young contestants and their efforts and good luck and may the best team prevail from South Union Township Supervisor Rick Vernon's. Here we go, Gary. Bottom of the seventh. Mustangs down one. You're right. Here we go. And uh, leading off for the Mustangs is going to be Vecchiola. Maybe that's a pinch hitter. Let's see who we got. That, that's Vecchiola. It's hard to Hard to see. Only a freshman. There's a check swing foul by Vecchiola for strike one. It looks like on deck. Looks like uh, number six for the Mustangs. That that would be Paxton. Yeah, Paxton Patronus, correct. That sun is right in our face right now. Oh, one pitch. Strike two called. So... Carrini finding the strike zone. Three-pitch strikeout to end the sixth. And here's the 0-2. Strike three. So the all-important leadoff hitter not getting on for the Mustangs. That's going to bring up Patro Patronus going to get an opportunity at the plate now. Batting left-handed. Ball low and outside. So need to make Carrini... Bring it in. He's throwing a lot of confidence right now. Outside ball two, so working very quickly. He gets it back. He's back on the mound. He sets a go again. 2-0 pitch. That's 3-0, low and inside. So need a runner no matter how we can get it here at this point. Bottom of the seventh, trailing 2-1. to one. He's still not slowing down. One out. That's take all the way. That's outside. Ooh, Wow. We can't really see it from here, but I. They're tougher like to he see now with the sun. Looked like he reached out for that one. There's ball four. All right, low and outside. So, a base runner as Patronus works a walk. Shane Layton will step in now. The right fielder. Another opportunity with a runner on for the Mustangs. Little life. One out in the inning. The senior. Dominic Carrini on the mound. Looks like it's his game to win or lose at this point. Patronus got some speed. Foul ball dribbler down the third base side for strike one to Shane Layton. Even with a man on first here, Gary, you look at Carrini's focus, at least on that initial pitch, it's all the batter right now. Absolutely, and might give Patronus an opportunity to get down to second, but you also don't want to run yourself into the second out of the inning. Does glance over at first now. Here's a pitch. There's a high fly ball to right field, getting under it and making the catch. Right fielder Eli Boring for the second out. So the Mustangs down to their final out. It's no line. Almost have to think about stealing in this situation to get a runner in scoring position. Not going to see, doesn't look like Carini has any wild pitches in his arsenal. There's a pitch. Ground ball to third. Up with it. Making the throw to first. And safe is the wow. call. Wow. That was another bang, bang play. Woo! Scoop over here by the uh, pitcher, former pitcher for um, Latrobe Bradish, Bradish here. It's dumb. I'm sorry. Who's at it? That's Missouri. Made a nice play, but beating it out for the second hit of the game is Noah Lyon. 
Well, Matt Bastiano might have had a little gripe on that one, Gary. Seen a lot of close plays wow. over at first. I thought he was out. I did too. I did too, but he wasn't. <laughs> no, not according to the umpires. <laughs> so now we have two on, two outs. Parker Hoff at the plate for the Mustangs. Game's had a little bit of everything in it, hasn't it? He needs to get his bat moving for sure. Certainly has the ability. We've seen that. And if he could put one into the outfield, I would think you're going to be able to score Patronus out there at second. They're deep. Parker Hoff now. First pitch low for ball one. C.J. Gask standing on deck. 1-0 pitch, high drama, and there's a high fly gonna ball. That's going to fall, and that's going to send Patronus. They're going to throw to second, almost picked off the runner at second. Yeah, but coming in to score and tie this game is Patronus on the RBI single by Parker Hoff right up the middle. Little looper that found the grass. You talk about coming through at a big time, Hoff, whose bat's been a little cold here in the spring, coming through with a hit when the Mustangs needed it most. And now we're knotted up at two here in the bottom of the seventh. Mustangs not done yet. Maybe a walk-off here, Gary. With C.J. Guest get the plate and out there in scoring position, Lyon. First pitch. Looks for ball one. Mustangs tying it up. We're at least going extras. Matt didn't know what he was getting himself into, Gary. He has an early alarm clock tomorrow, working our morning shift. 1-0 pitch, and there's a shot to third. Oh. That's going to be an easy put out at third, so a nice play down there by Riley Smith to end the inning, but the Mustangs rally for one. We're going to extras here at Tom Lamman Field. It's the Mustangs 2, the Wildcats 2 on WMBS and the Sea Harper Sports Nights. And Gary, quality care doesn't have to be hard to find. NovaCare Rehabilitation has locations in Uniontown and Masontown and is accessible for all of your recovery needs. Same-day appointments and no referrals needed means making an appointment is an easy process with industry-leading treatments including LVST, big therapy for Parkinson's disease with increases mobility, improves balance, and decreases time necessary to complete tasks are available at both locations. NovaCare Rehabilitation. Don't miss the opportunity to personalize your care with NovaCare. And, of course, our friends at Uniontown Detailing. They offer all-inclusive auto care experience. Services include full auto detailing, professional ceramic coating, window tinting, undercoating, paint, paintless dent repair, and more. Conveniently located right down the street from WMBS on South Mount Vernon Avenue. Best of luck to all of our local teams from Uniontown Detailing. So now we're going to head to the eighth. Here we go. Extra innings. Bonus baseball yes. here on WMBS. Remember that game we did, the uh, Laurel Highlands-Albert Gallatin game, Gary, maybe 10, like, 15 years yeah. ago in the rain. What did it go, like 16 or 18? <laughs> yeah, we were getting drenched. <laughs> it was raining. We were under a tent. <laughs> Didn't help. All the memories. I think that was early April, too. Yep. Our scorebooks were all wet. All wet. At least we don't have the rain here today. No. Noah Lyons still on the hill for the Mustangs. We head to the eighth. And do up the cleanup hitter for Greater Latrobe, Tony Masseri, first baseman. Uniontown now up 7-1 over Albert Gallatin, bottom of the sixth. Again, Ringgold knocked off Bell Vernon. Masseri had moved from first base. I'm not quite sure where he went in the field because Bradish is at first. I think he's playing third base now. There's a foul ball back, so quick strike there by Lyon. No jackets needed here this afternoon. No, I want Temperature in the 75, I believe. High and inside, ball one. One and one. I went home, put the shorts on, the short sleeve shirt on. I didn't get that opportunity. No. <laughs> we know that. There's a drive up the middle and a leadoff single for Greater Latrobe. Masseri leading it off, his first hit of the game. Makes him one for four, but the all-important leadoff hitter, that's going to bring up Eli Boring. 
Boring singled in the second, flew out the left in the fourth, and was walked intentionally in the fifth. I'm sorry, in the sixth. I'm sorry. And there's going to be a, a pinch runner again, and the speed merchant comes in. Yep. They're going to run him every inning, Mason Leonard. Batting left-handed is boring. One double play for the Mustangs, a 1-2-3 double play with bases loaded back in the sixth inning that ended that bases loaded situation for Greater Latrobe, limited that inning to one run. So Mustangs probably playing for a bunt here. There's no lights here at Mustang Field or Landman Field at Laurel Highlands High School, so we can only go probably another 90 minutes or so tonight, Gary. <laughs> oh, it doesn't get dark till 9. Up at third is Sankovic, way up at third. See if square around. No, and there's a shot to left field, and oh, Patronus lost it in the sun or something but did not make the catch, and that's going to be a big error. Out there in left field for Patronus. Looks like he had it completely measured and just went off the top of his glove in behind him for two men on and nobody out for the Latrobe Wildcats. Yeah, just a tough spot there for Patronus. And, again, the sun coming down at a wild angle right now. That's kind of out to his right, though. Yeah. I don't think he can blame that on the sun. He had it the whole way and just at the last second didn't squeeze it. There's another shot in the gap between short and third, and that's going to allow Patronus to come in. Here's their throw to home, and not in time. Didn't hit the cutoff and allows the runner to go to third. So three straight batters getting on base for the Greater Latrobe Wildcats. They score the go-ahead run here in the top of the eighth. RBI single there for Jacob Kramer, the left fielder for Greater Latrobe. Nobody out. Runners on first and third. Yeah, just a tough spot there for Laurel Highlands. Not the way you wanted to start this top half of the eighth inning. You had a little momentum getting that game-tying run in the bottom of the seventh inning, but all the momentum now gone away. Three straight Wildcats reaching base safely here to start the eighth. One run already across, and now the Mustangs playing from behind again. At the plate now is Fasica. Runner going. And no throw. So now two men in scoring position. Fasikas at the plate, on on an error in the second, grounder to second in the fourth, and hit into that one, two, three double play in the sixth. But if you end up losing this game, Gary, you have to go back and look at the runners left on base, especially even take that one step farther, the runners left on base in scoring position. Absolutely. And this game have been a killer for the Mustangs. One and one is the count. Runners on second and third with nobody out. And that gets away from the catcher, but just behind home plate, so no chance to advance. But two and one now with the Mustangs having to bring the infield up. Try to eliminate any further damage here in the top half of the eighth with Greater Latrobe now leading three to two. Who do the Mustangs have coming to the plate when you get an opportunity in the bottom of the eighth? There's a high fly ball. That's going to be shallow for Gesk. And there's a tag at home, but their play is going to be at third. He's going to be out at third, so a double play, but a run scores. And that's scoring um, boring from third on the sacrifice fly, but nice play to hit the cutoff man, O'Brien, and make the throw to third for the tag by Sankovic for the second out of the inning. To get two quick outs, but you sacrifice another run, and now you'll be down. To your final three outs, down at least two runs going to the bottom of the eighth. Correct. An aggressive base running, but certainly paying off there for Greater Latrobe. So Riley Smith will come up with the bases now empty. Two up for the Mustangs will be Frank Kula, Sankovic, and O'Brien. So the meat of the order for the Mustangs. Ground down third, that's and that's fair ball into left field. Nice play out there by Patronus that time to keep that to a single. As that was a line shot down the third base line by a pinch hitter. And that's number 10. Carini, is that? Carini. Yeah, the pitcher. Yep. And you couldn't blame the pitching at all today on the Laurel Highland side. I mean, considering the fact you did not have your ace here for this series to pitch the way the guys did today, 
and I thought really did a nice job. You just did not, again, the story, did not get the bats going, and that's going to be the difference. Now you have Luke Nipper, who was actually warming up earlier, the lefty, on now to run for Greater Latrobe. All right, trying to get this third out. Keep it at a two-run deficit. Breaking pitch in there for a strike to Dante Bassiano. Second pitch again. Ooh, didn't get the call that time. Look like it just missed inside. One and one. Who do we have batting in the bottom of the eighth, Gary? That's why I said Kula, Sankovic, okay. and O'Brien, the meat of the order Sorry, with the that. Mustangs. Yeah. That is good news. There's another ground ball. Slow roller. That's going to be trouble, but nice play by Sankovic. Barehanded over to O'Brien for the out. But... Greater Latrobe plates two in the inning and now lead four to two as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Mustangs need to try to tie it up or take the lead here on WMBS and the Sea Harper Sports Night. And Movement Physiotherapy is here to serve you, now located off Route 40 on Pedro Drive. West of Union Town, Movement Physiotherapy treats back issues, knee and ankle pain, shoulder, hip Nick, neck and balance issues and provides post-surgical rehab using aquatic therapy, manual therapy, therapeutic exercise, soft tissue massage, electrical stimulation, running analysis, and balance programs. Tyler Gasick and his team are ready to improve your health with physical therapy. To schedule your appointment, phone 724-912-PTPT or visit Movement Physiotherapy online at movementpp.com. Of course, I have to thank our friends as well, Gary, at the Sea Harbor Auto Group. Sponsoring our high school sports night. The best price every time, all the time. The Sea Harper Auto Group. Huge error in that top of the eighth with uh, one out that allowed the run. I'm sorry, no outs that really allowed the rally to occur for Greater Latrobe. But the Mustangs now trailing by two. They need to load them up again yep. and see if we can get some runs across. Dominic Carini came in. Carrarini came in in relief of Logan Bradish, and Frank Kula will start things off for the Mustangs. First, first one in the dirt, and that caught the umpire in the neck. He's in pain. Back behind home plate, bending over. Not sure who the umpires were here today, but that was not something that you want to see happen. He's struggling a little bit. Yeah, that's a tough situation. Shaking his head. Seems like in a positive manner now. And, of course, Laurel Highlands does have their athletic trainer here as well today. And yeah, he's going to go over and take a look. It might be a situation where he actually broke the skin. Mm. Did it hit him directly there or was it off of a foul it a, tip? No, it was a ball in the dirt. Ball in the dirt, okay, skipped up. So, going to take a little break and get a drink and get back in there. Umpire's got to be tough, too. Yeah. I'm sure he's kind of seen that before, Gary. I mean, anytime you've no doubt. umped a number of years, you're going to have those situations pop up. And That's the ultimate tools of ignorance. Yes. Especially behind home plate. Yeah. When you get beat up back there, just like the catchers. Sometimes so, worse. Yeah. Carrini now facing Frank Kula with a one ball, no strike count. Nobody out. Bottom of the eighth. 4-2. Latrobe on top. That's outside for ball two. We're in extra innings, but Latrobe plating two in the top of the eighth. Take the lead at 4-2. to two. Frankie trying to get things started here for the Mustangs in the bottom of the eighth. It's a pitch. That's in the dirt for ball three. So I'm not sure if he's pitching around, Frank, but he certainly hasn't given him anything close to even take a shot at. 3-0 pitch. Taking all the way that time was Frank. Have to do that. We need runners. 3-1 pitch. That's ball four. Low and inside, so Frank Kula works a... Lead off walk here in the 
bottom half of the eighth. You have the game tying run coming to the plate. In the form of Ty, Tyler Sankovic. And we're going to possibly have a pitching change here. Going to go with the lefty now. Again, Sankovic, the left hand hitting Sankovic. So we're going to bring in, looks like. Right, Nipper, I would think. He was warming up earlier, 16. Yep. Sankovic has been on base every time. Three walks and a single. Reminder with a quick recap of the game as soon as this one wraps that's, up. That's the fifth time on base for Frank Kula here this afternoon. It's scoring very one productive. run, scoring yep. one run and walking three times, a single a double in the first and a single in the fifth. I'm sorry, sixth. So that is number sixteen. Luke. Is it Nipper or Nippar? I think it's Nipper. We did not get a confirmation on that. We're going to go with Nippar. Okay. I'll get you some numbers on him, Gary, as well. They're all taking guesses up here on his name. Yep. And nonetheless, he'll look to close this one off for Greater Latrobe here today. And Nipper on the season, this will be... Already his fifth appearance on the mound in six games. Wow, has worked seven and two-thirds innings. 0-1 record with a save. He's given him four runs, three of them earned. Walked two and struck out one. So that's something to see action on the mound in five of six games so far this season, all in relief yep. for Nipper. He's a junior. So the Mustangs with the leadoff runner on in the Actually, form only a of Frank Gary. You're right. Only a sophomore. A lot Younger of innings pitcher, for yeah. a sophomore, yeah. Right there. Lefty versus lefty with Sankovic at the plate. No need to take any chances here. There's a shot down the left field line. It's going to be foul ball. I didn't miss by much. We didn't wow. have a great angle on it, but that still was pretty close right along the shade line there down the left field side. That could have been... Extra bases. Could definitely would have put Kula at third. Yeah. Put a good ride into it, to say the least. We're two hours and 43 minutes in here today. So Frank still back at first. Had to take a long jaunt to get back on first. There's the pitch, and that's in the dirt. No chance for Frank to move, and really not necessary. Trailing by two. One and one now to Sankovic. Kula getting a nice lead over here at first on a base hit. Like to see him down at third. There's a there's a shot up the middle, and that's going to be caught by the center fielder. That ball hung up a long time to center field, and a long run there to make the catch was. Eric, that's Batista. Batista. He's played a nice the first game out, out of the inning. Center. Yeah, had a hit to start the game and has been very solid defensively for Greater Latrobe here today. So O'Brien now will step in. Flew out to center, hit by a pitch, walked and struck out. Looks at ball one. Kind of baking up here today, wouldn't you say? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> We're all going to need a shower here after this one's Where's over. Where's the WMBS air conditioning? <laughs> Didn't bring that today. One strike at the letters that time, one and one. I'll walk in the house. I think the wife will say to me, what stinks? It'll be me. <laughs> yeah. That's a high fly ball again. Looks like the infield going to have a play on it, but coming in and making the catch from right field. That's good mechanics by the right fielder, Eli Boring, calling off the second baseman. Much easier to make that catch coming in than going out. So now the Mustangs down to their last out, trailing 4-2. to two. Game time run still at the plate. And Vecchiola will step in. Tough day at the plate for Vecchiola. Three strikeouts and a walk, and there's a high fly ball to left field. That's going to be out of play beyond the fence. Gave it a ride. Go 
goal is getting a workout, getting around the bases on those foul balls. One strike now to Vecchiola. Here's a pitch. Ball outside, one and one. Mustang need a little bit of a rally here with two outs. Vecchiola at the plate. Foul back, so two strikes. Yep. Apparently last chance to dance now for the Mustangs as far as the game goes today. Need to call all of the Cowboys in, corral the Mustangs. <laughs> Foul tip, so he stayed alive there on a pitch low and inside, but not one you need to take with two strikes. So one ball and two strikes. Runner on at first in the form of Frank Kula. Four to two, the ball game in the balance right here. Here's the pitch. Fouled again into the dugout again. They had a couple of scares over there on the greater Latrobe side today. Wow. That was a... Hot one. Here we do it again with a one ball, two strike count, two outs, runner on at first. Not par with the pitch, and there's a pop up again out of play. Here we go. From the stretch, here's the pitch, and what do we call timeout? Wow. I'm not sure he granted it, did he? So Vecchiola called a timeout. Granted by the home plate umpire. Here's the pitch. Inside and high, two and two. Luke Nypar from the stretch again. Here's a pitch, slow one, and that's going to be a pop-up in the infield. Could be, could do it. Now, it could have been an interference wow. call, but wow. Still made the catch. Still made the catch. The shortstop, that's Cooper Bassiano, and the Latrobe Wildcats pull out the extra inning victory, 4-2 to two here at Tom Lamman Field, and the Mustangs, Go down two in a row to the Latrobe Wildcats, and we'll be back here on WMBS Facebook Live and the Sea Harper Sports Night to tell you all about it after these messages yeah, from our sponsors. Here, I'll just let you know that, um, again, our post-game show will be brought to you by South Union Township Supervisor Rick Vernon. I have to thank all of our sponsors that brought you the game today, including the Sea Harper Auto Group, Movement Physiotherapy, Davis & Davis Attorneys at Law, Russ Blayhill, your local all-state insurance agent, First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County, the Catholic War Veterans, Post 1669 in Hopwood, Potter's Bar and Grill, Uniontown Detailing, Ford of Uniontown, Movement Physiotherapy, the WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, Peachens Pharmacy, MNR Trans, at the Sprouse Insurance Group, Novacare Rehabilitation, Ted Sova and Son Body and Fender Repair, John Marietta for Fayette County Commissioner, South Union Township Supervisor Rick Vernon, Melinda Delarose for Judge, Mama Ruka's Pizza Shop, the Center's Freehab Services and Physical Therapist Jim Burns, State Farm Agent Lauren Yeoman, the Radcliffe Law Firm, Shop and Save, Uniontown Detailing, Jimmy Johns and Attorneys Bobby Gordon, Shane Gannon and Tim Witt at Watson Mundorf LLP. You set to go with a recap, Gary? I am. The Mustangs with just the two runs did tie it up in the seventh inning, forcing the extra innings, but Greater Latrobe coming on with those two runs in the top of the eighth to get the victory. The Mustangs did have seven hits. The Mustangs left 15 runners on base and committed two errors, one costly error in the uh, eighth inning that led to those two runs for Greater Latrobe. For Greater Latrobe, they had the four runs, just seven hits for the uh, Greater Latrobe Wildcats matching the Mustangs. And Greater Latrobe did not have the same left-on-base percentage that the Mustangs did. They only left on base 2, 5, 7, 
nine. Well, they did leave ten men, men, men on base, and they also committed two errors. So the Mustangs made a strong effort, and the pitching was relatively good for the Mustangs. Got a good outing from Patronus and from uh, – Lion, but uh, was all for naught as the Great Latrobe hangs on for the four to two victory. No more high school baseball next Tuesday, one week from today. We'll have a digital broadcast of the Laurel Highlands Albert Gallatin game here at four, followed by Bell Vernon and Uniontown, both on the radio and on our Facebook live feed from Bailey Park. Red Raiders, they were one and zero going into the game today with. Albert Gallatin at last check, they were up 7-1, so likely going to 2-0 on the season. But not all lost for Laurel Highlands. They were 0-2 to start the conference season last year, Gary, and ended up having a pretty good year. Absolutely, and you got to believe that the Mustang bats are going to come alive a little bit more, and especially in the uh, clutch when they have the runners in scoring position. That was the problem here this afternoon. And a, a couple of highlights, Frank Kula on base five times for the Mustangs did score a run. Tyler Sankovich on base also four times for the Mustangs. So they uh, did have some good at-bats and uh, forced the Greater Latrobe, into, Greater Latrobe Wildcats into extra innings. That's a good team across the way at Greater Latrobe. They're ranked very high. So the Mustangs need to uh, take a little bit away from this game positively and uh, hope they can move into the meat of the schedule with uh, a few more wins. Wildcats approved a 4-2 and two overall, 2-0 two and oh in conference play. Mustangs dropped to 0-5 overall, 0-2 oh in the section. Again, we're with you next Tuesday for more high school baseball here on WMBS. For Gary Frankhauser, Matt Sapienza behind the camera, and Frank Kula helping us out with the score hub today. This is Brian Morozak. Have yourselves a pleasant good evening. Again, your final score from Landman Field, Greater Latrobe 4 and Laurel Highlands 2. So long, everybody. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. I didn't know what I had was originally I just pointed